here live at the station of decapitation without your head and i'm nasty neil and i'm joined i think it's a special time to have to have you on here we got the eclipse coming up horror oh, yeah. icon kelly maroney hi Very everybody nice. thank you for being on thank you for having me yeah thank you for coming on so sure. uh with with the eclipse coming up i assume like uh does neither comic get brought up brought up a lot now? Are you getting oh, tagged a lot on social media? I might as well be an astronomer because every time something happens, everybody goes, "Look at the sky! It looks just like none of the comet." And they write to me, and um, um, there's a devil comet now. And and I mean, everybody loves to make jokes about it, of course, you know. And so I mean, it's it is funny. So we make jokes on my pages all the time, you know, long story yeah. shed. You know, I mean, you name it. They're they're just they riff on it because. Night of the Comet fans tend to be pretty witty, actually. <laughs> so they'll come up with, and, sh and Choppy Mall fans too, so they come up with funny stuff, and then I answer, and it's great. But um, it's not so much the eclipses, it's that devil comet mm. that's hanging around that's probably going to make an appearance because why Why wouldn't it? You know, it's yeah. the devil comet. And um, um, now it's also called the Mother of Dragons. No, oh, that's a nicer name, I think. Well, yeah, and it's a dragon year. The conspiracy theories are wild out there. Google it. It's, I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's pretty wild. So uh Night of the Comet. I know we've talked about it before, but I just want to ask you a couple things about um so when did you know like it had such a big cult following? And it seems like it's grown over the years. Like right after you did it, like did it have a big following or was it more later on? Oh, it was it's been building. Built, you know, at first. Like there was a period of time for uh, several years where people thought of it as their own movie that only they knew about yeah. because they'd mention it and people wouldn't know what they were talking about. But that was kind of the charm of it is everyone thought it was their movie that no one else knew about. And meanwhile, because, because they're talking to me, I hear about it every five seconds, you know, so <laughs> to me, it's not a secret or anything like that, but, but to them, you know, in their friends and stuff, they, they could possibly be the only person that's seen it. Um, but now it's it's crazy. <laughs> Chopping mall is even kind of worse. Yeah. <laughs> boy, oh boy. And, you know, I mean, how lucky can you get? It's like all of us. I had no idea when I was doing this, you know, that uh, all these movies in the 80s that are going to be more popular now than than way more popular now than they were when we shot them. I mean, mm -hmm. I took a lot of a lot of uh, guff for making Chopping Mall. People made fun of me for doing that. And now, ha, ha, ha. Guess who has the last laugh? <laughs> did that ever, was that ever an issue though? Did it ever come up like uh, you were out for a role and they're like, yeah. oh, we frowned on like that you did this? Yeah, I had met with a big, pretty big agent and she looked at my resume and she said, Chopping Mall. And she laughed in my face. And then it would be like, uh, I know what Fast Times is. Uh, I don't know what Nine of the Common is. And, you know, I mean, big people out here are pretty brutal. I got, you got to have a very yeah. thick skin. Well, just so, the night of the comic could be anything, but the name yeah. Chopping Mall does bring like a uh, in my in face. It. That was the end of the meeting as far as she was concerned. I mean, it was just, and so I thought about taking it off. I think I did maybe take it off at one point for a while, but that was the thinking back then, you know, it was so stupid. I'm surprised I ever worked because um, uh, soap operas were looked down upon and horror was looked down upon. And those were the two, <laughs> the two things I did. Yeah. So, um, and now, I mean, nowadays, you know, horror is cool. Oh, yeah. Eventually made horror cool, but it wasn't cool at one point. Yeah. Even just oh, as a fan, like, uh, I couldn't go into a, a store and buy, like, horror movie t-shirts or anything. Yeah. Now, like, they sell little kids t-shirts with zombies on, and it, yeah. it's, it's very strange. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, I'm really happy about it, um, but people people now they i don't think they have any idea how much we were because in those days like a writer director that's how they got their foot in the door whether they were really into horror or not yeah and all of us actors would be like because i liked it you know because as an actress the stakes are higher you know and it's just a blast to do it and the people just generally in horror just tend to be a hoot also back in the day we had a lot more fun everybody's like more uptight now about making a mistake or costing somebody money but we laughed our butts off back in those days um they weren't as watching us as well universal was but 
they weren't watching us as closely as apparently they do now. Although I've never felt on the stuff that I do these days, I've never felt that anybody was, um, but I do hear from other people that, yeah, that set was so uptight. There was no sense of humor on it. I haven't personally experienced that. It could just be that I'm so goofy that, <laughs> that people just laugh at me. And so I think they have a sense of humor. Um, but um, nowadays people go into horror on purpose. And it's, I mean, you know, it's kind of stupid because historically the only thing that has ever consistently made money in the, in the um, movie industry was horror, but they had, like, had some sort of a, um, a disconnect about it, you know, and to this day it'll be like, I mean, I saw somebody, one of the directors or something on Twitter, now it's X, but whatever, a Twitter um, saying, did you have any idea that horror was um, financially, <laughs> horror was big right now and people could yeah. make money on horror? He was being very facetious, you know, because duh, it, like from day one, hi. And yes. that's how they kind of get it. I don't know. And uh, like uh, today, besides like the giant blockbuster, like comic book movies and stuff, uh, the smaller movies are all horror movies that get theatrical releases and, and yeah. you can make money. Even stuff that didn't cost much at all, like a Terrifier 2, very low budget compared to, you know, movies that are out there and made, you know, tens of $10 million or $12 million. And it only costs, I think, 500000 or something. Yeah. And, and we've, uh, this business is over a hundred years old and you, they just, they don't get it yet. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. That movie made money. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> horror has always been the only thing that saved this, you know, that's the, you know, had some money coming in at least, you know, as opposed to when everything else was tanking. You could count on horror. And, we just, and it's one know, of the one of the genres that I think uh, stays around too, where like if I watch old Cisco and Ebert's because I grew up watching them and I'll watch them sometimes. And a lot of those movies, even stuff that was up for Oscars, like I've like totally forgot about them. Like, oh yeah, I kind of remember that movie. But then, like horror movies mm -hmm. from that same era, even if they're like some weird, silly movie, whatever, uh, they have tons of fans today. And, and you know, decades later, where some of the bigger movies, you know, people completely forget. You know, it's a funny thing that one of the producers of Night of the Comet, because when I was in the middle of shooting it, before I left, I, I lived in New York at the time, and I had gotten the Woody Allen movie. And so, sure enough, no sooner did I get deeply into Night of the Comet than they called and said, okay, we're ready to shoot. Because he didn't have the money then, so it was on hold. So when something's on hold, you go on with your life because, you know, it's so you can't sit there and hold your breath till someone comes up with their money. Um, so I came out here and did this and they called. And um, it was such a thing where, like, they were saying, well, we can shoot her out, like, just over a weekend. It's no, because it was Purple Rose of Cairo and it was the movie star who goes, where do you think you're going? You're right. um, the Gene Harlow type movie star. Yeah. And I cried so hard. Wayne Crawford said, nope. And I just thought, you're an actor. How could you not understand this? And he said, because um, I'm a little bitty movie and this will ruin my life if you don't show up. And if Roland Joffe says, we need her longer. And I say, I need her back. Who do you think is going to win? I couldn't argue with that. Plus, you know, they would have bleached my hair and shaved off my eyebrows. And I wouldn't look this, I wouldn't be Samantha when I got back. And I don't know what they would have done with that. I mean, he did the right thing and I learned a valuable lesson about um, producing. I mean, I really got it. Oh, but I cried my guts out because a Woody Allen movie, you know, and he understood that part. And he said, you know, look at it this way. Um, nobody's, and whoever did play this part, apologies in advance. Nobody's gonna remember who played that part. Everybody's gonna remember you. And I went, oh, come on. That is pushing it. And I think he maybe did feel like it was pushing it a little bit. Yeah. But he was kind of right. Yeah. He was kind of I mean, right. Samantha yeah. got very, you know, very well known. Uh, yeah. Let's see. A lot of people here are happy on. Kelly, Maron uh, Kelly Maroney, awesome. Uh, Teller Corpse, he says hello. Well, that's Robert. Hey, Ryan oh, my God. Hi. Hi. Yeah. That's well, Corpse. You have girls and corpses. Yeah. That and you work with him in a lot of movies now. Um. Well, I worked with There's him. Exorcism. Movies. Yeah, he um, was one of the producers of Exorcism at sixty thousand feet, and then he's been an actor in a couple other things I've done too. So I don't know, like he might also have produced some of it. I'm not aware of that, but he was definitely in them. We didn't have scenes together, but he's a really yeah. good guy. Yeah, I, I knew him from um, 
when he was doing Girls and Corpses and, and from the convention scene. Right. Well, that's kind of how I met him. And Is that how you seen... meet like uh, several of the people that you, because I would assume it's like, uh, you know, newer directors or something and they meet you at a convention and like they ask you to come in. Does, it, does that happen a lot? Um, no, doesn't really. Okay, but, well, what do um, I know? Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think you meet, meet um, newer directors at film festivals, which mm -hmm. I love going to film festivals in they're a hoot. Um, and I think that's where you meet the, uh, the people that are breaking in and they got a, a movie yeah. or something. But um, the, you can actually um, meet people that are, you know, genre and, 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 you know, make friends and get together with them um, at, at conventions. Because mm -hmm. I think the reason, I think the reason that I said hello to, I mean, I, I kind of, when you kind of know somebody and you're kind of afraid to walk up to them because you don't know if they know who you are or not, you know, right? Um, but I did know Sid and I walked up to the table to say hi to Sid. And then that, and then it's it sort of like um, after I did that, although it had nothing to do with anything else, all of a sudden, like we were really friends after that. I, am, I making, am I even making sense here? But that's how it happens. You know, it's like an organic connection. Yeah. You mean Sid Haig, just for people who don't who didn't know who Sid was, Sid Haig. Oh, what? <laughs> there's uh, I just... assume most people do, but I just want to make sure people know that the, the, the you know Sid Haig. Wow. Go to your room if you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, big part of Without Your Head was our very first guest at our first show in in 2006, and uh, uh, helped me at, at conventions to. Uh, he's a big part of Without Your Head, but just in case anyone out there who who didn't know who you, you met like, by Sid. Yeah. The great Sid Hag. You know, I loved your beginning because I never, I never um, really looked at it like I look at it right. just now. And you got Sid, you got Betsy Russell, you got, I mean, all the, all the big superstars of horror. A no caller. Oh, shoot. I'm nope. so sorry. Stop okay. that. Yeah, I was trying to get in here, but yeah. Uh, 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 the, a there's call. a longer version that you're actually in it too. I don't always I play am? a long version that's like three minutes long. Cause oh, that's, that's cool. Long. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, but I just thought that's kind of that's exciting. That's a good build up, you know, especially if you're gonna be on this because you, you kind of feel like you're wow, Betsy Russell, Sid Haig, and now I'm gonna talk and that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> you're in good company. Yeah, I'll say. And uh, you did mention festivals, which I saw um on your on your Facebook. You have a Portland Horror Film Festival. So what what are your involvements in the festivals? Uh, I was invited to go up there um, um, and do a Night of the Comet thing for one of them. And I just love them. Brian and Gwen, they run they run the, um, but this is one in Portland. They also have one further east. Um, and they're just lovely people. And they have the whole, because I, now I've done a couple of Lovecraft films, thanks to Chad yeah. Aaron, and thanks to his corpsey. And um, they have that HP Lovecraft thing where they actually have, um, services like for for worshipers and things like that, you know, like a breakfast. I mean, yeah. they they do a whole thing about it, and um, so I got myself a dress for the the comet thing, and, and it had squid on it. And <laughs> I love that. Yeah, uh, my co-host Norman here, Annabelle, is really big in the Lovecraft. She goes to the Necronomicon here in Rhode Island every year. Oh, I've not been to that one, but I just I I've always been fascinated with with that and I um I finally got a chance to do it, you know, because Chad yeah. was doing things that were not I mean the character that I played in um the deep ones and the old ones was a guy. It was a it was a man he was the town drunk. Mm -hmm. Ambrose Zadok Zadok was the, the town drunk and so um I played it. <laughs> <laughs> did Chad like hey we got the town drunk you're perfect for this? How did how did that come about? You know that's a good question. That's a really good question. <laughs> I d I don't know why he made it a woman maybe he felt like he was getting to um as we say sausage festival i i don't know i don't know but like yeah. it, you know if you have a convention where you just notice that there's a whole lot of guys and not very many girls we do i'm afraid to admit that we call them sausage festivals <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry you guys if that offends anybody yeah um, are you in the third one or, or can't we say yet i don't know i know no, you I'm not. oh no um i'm not but um, that was that was Zambros's uh, Zambro Zadek, um That was her whole thing because it's not the same story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, 
But uh, it was, so Chad, when did you first meet Chad Farron? I met him um, on the set of Exorcism at 60,000 feet. And did you just hit it off right away? Because he always, uh, you know, brings you in for, uh, for for cool little roles in his films. Um, I guess we, I guess so. He's very, um, what's the word? Um, what's the word? What do I want to say? He's um, spontaneous. Like when he's shooting, you're sitting there going, because um, we did actually, Adrian, um, Adrian Barbeau was in it and everything. Oh, nice. And we sort of said, all, you know, as we're looking around, how is this ever going to cut? Because he'd see something he wanted to shoot here, and then he'd see something he wanted to shoot here. And I had this whole thing I was ready to do, and then he decided, it, I guess, to himself that it wasn't going to happen. And so I was waiting to shoot it, and he didn't shoot it. <laughs> so it's just very spontaneous. And um, um, he's very much focused on what he's doing. So it wasn't like we had a, you know, we had yeah. a lot of yucks on the set or anything like that. He, but He's just he just sort of follows his own um his own muse, I guess. Uh, so I wasn't sure. Was I can't, honestly, I wasn't sure if he liked me or not. As actually that happens to me though. If somebody's very <laughs> focused on what they're doing, I go, I don't know if they if I'm doing a good job here or if they don't like me or like what the story is, because of course we all take it personally. Yeah. You know, and then at the rap party he goes, Do you want to be in a Lovecraft thing? I mean, I was like, Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know what it was. Yeah, I do. Yeah, oh, that's that's awesome. And they came out. They're really fun movies. Uh, we've had Chad on a couple times. You know, they're great. And plus, uh, our buddy Joe Castro. Oh uh, yeah. Hopefully, you like him too. He did the effects. Of, so, what was uh, Joe like to work with? He's an exceptionally kind and wonderful human being. Mm -hmm. He's just like a ten. He's a 12 on the, on the scale of one to 10 human beings. He's a nice. really, really, really good guy. Yeah, we and love Joe. He knows what he's doing. And, you know, I mean, I this my level of trust with him is I never, when, when I guess it's a spoiler maybe, in the deep ones when I, I show up, I, I, I look um, the worst for wear. Let's just put it that way. And I didn't even look to see what he'd done to me. And then at the end, when I was getting ready to go home, I had real contact lenses in and they got black and I couldn't get one out. And I said, he goes, I'll get it out. And I went, okay, would you please just dig this contact lens out of my eye? <laughs> I mean, yeah. So I had no fears around working with Joe at all. I just completely trusted him. Didn't look at Yeah, that's trust. <laughs> yeah, it is. Especially for an actress. <laughs> it's like, we always want to know what we're going to look like because, yeah. you know, th things will come and go and no one re will remember anything that happened that day on set. But your face is up there, <laughs> or Edler. Yeah. And uh, the, not to make the 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 interview about uh, me, but he did the uh, mask for my feature my feature film, uh, films once a future smash and end zone two, which we just finished our festival oh. run, and so I'm very oh, happy cool. uh, with Joe. We can make this about you. No, no, it's all right. yes, all right, we can. <laughs> you can have shout a little out to bit, Joe. Yeah. yeah, and I have. Uh, I don't have as many, I'm sure, as most people, but I have a few festival trophies up here because of that movie. So I'm very happy. Hey. Yeah. Wait, nice. Let's see them. Can you? Uh, this, whoa, I almost pulled my microphone up. Uh, <laughs> this one is probably the, my favorite. This was uh, from Genre Blast. And oh, it's, a, oh, it's the one they give out at the end. It's called the. Uh, the genre blast forever award and it's the for they give this for the movie that really encompasses uh independent filmmaking and so uh -huh. it was uh, very very Thanks. great to win this and some of the trophies are with michael uh, epstein and sofia cassiola since we made the movie oh. together so oh, i gosh. have some they have some and well, hey. That's we need great, to like the stanley cup and like share them <laughs> back and forth or something yeah I mean, it's funny. We, I know their names. I've, I've not worked with them, but I see them online every day. So yeah, they're out in LA. I'm in I'm in Massachusetts. It's across the country. Oh, okay. Well, I'm coming to Massachusetts um, in the fall. Oh, really? For what? For, yeah, I'm uh, doing. Um, of course. The, the, I just said I would. I just. I just. Um, made, said we just made a deal to do it. The tw uh, September 29th to October 1st. They're getting shorter and shorter, these shows. Some of them are like, maybe only one or two days now. Where it used to be like Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And 
there's still they still exist, but a lot of them are shorter now. And I, sure. I think it, if they don't have to rent it for three days. Or, you know, I mean, they can condense things. I think it's a money saver to to not have it. Yeah, I, you know, and sometimes the Sunday would be slower on the three day one, so I guess it, it makes sense. Oh but yeah, something about being there for three days, I think, is nice. Well, the thing, I mean, people would say, "Well, we get a rush after people get out of church," and I said. <laughs> What? That's a horror convention. They were, kidding. <laughs> yeah. 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 they were kidding, and they weren't kidding. It was true. They go to church, and then oh, it did happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, I guess. I don't want to yeah. laugh at that, it's but great, it's unexpected. But I mean, yeah. It's like the first time somebody told me I had to put water in my car. I thought they were putting me on. It's, it's not a horse. <laughs> it's a car. And you know, you have to put water in your car. Did you know that? <laughs> was when I was Troy a have, his, his battery died like yesterday, so maybe he didn't See? have enough water in the car. Put water there you go. We have <laughs> the steam <laughs> powered, you know. I didn't. I had. It wasn't a call, car car culture because, um, you know, I was in New York. We run around no. in the subway and walk in cabs and stuff. So when I got out here, I had to have a crash course and learning how to drive. The first time I was out here, I didn't have a license, and the Teamsters had to pick me up. Which was hilarious. <laughs> they picked me up at like six o'clock, and my call time would be ten. But it was great because I'd sit there and watch the studio wake up. You know, yeah. it, it was sort of like the beginning of Turner Classic Movies, right? <laughs> because <laughs> it was. It was very much. That is pretty like deep. It was, and you know, almost like the sun rising and everything. It was very picturesque, and you could just see people. It, you could see it come to life, and. I'm glad that I had to ride with the Teamsters. It was ride with the Teamsters or walk, you, you know, basically. Yeah. Um, and so I got picked up at some odd times. But I think that was actually a good experience, now that I think of it. Uh, Jamie Hill says, hello, Kelly. What an honor. Jamie Hill from Skinamarink. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Hi. How are you? Very, very nice. Uh, John Reddy asks, was there ever talks of a Night of the Comet sequel? Oh, my goodness. Has there been talks about a night of the comet scene? Well, <laughs> um, at first, it was, um, what did Tom Everhart, he talked about, he was in meetings about um, the sequel, a cartoon. I mean, this has been gone on since day one. And so every few years to this day, someone will say, let's remake Night of the Comet. <laughs> and so we got to go. And so far, it's, you know why? Because it, as Tom says, if you look, if you start thinking about it, it doesn't really hold up. It's like you like the people in it. It's the human story that you like, but the story, I mean, you, it's it's about the people, and you can't get away from that. And um, a no caller. I am so sorry. Uh, you know okay. what? I should say, you know what? You're on. You're you're in an interview. Shut up. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. I thought that was off. That's okay. Um, yeah. So, and then, um, so that I, you know, I've, then they try to rewrite it and stuff like that. And then, I mean, people will write to me and say, out of respect, I want to let you know that I'm re I'm rewriting Night of the Comet and we're going to shoot it. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Cause that is nice. That is nice yeah. to be honored that way. Um, and then everybody gets all excited and um, it just comes down to that was an 80s thing. It was so 80s. And yeah. this, the whole thing, it's a relationship about the sisters. You know, mm -hmm. that's a Hallmark movie these days. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's they'd never make it. Oh, these two sisters, um, <laughs> you know, and then this one guy. And there's just a few zombies, but not a lot. And then it's all about them <laughs> family sticking together. Yeah. Everyone's going to go, get out of my office. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> <"No."> <laughs> it's, just, it's so 80s. And, um, you know, that was just how we were. Yeah. That's we were Catherine and I wore our hair. We, we, that wasn't a thing. Yeah. That's how we wore our hair. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I didn't dress like that. I mean, I saw my wardrobe and it was so loud and colorful. And I said, how come Kathy gets to wear such cool clothes and I look like a freaking clown here? And it was, <laughs> yeah. it was because I hadn't accepted that the world was over. So I was all bright and alive and oh. stuff like that. And she knew what had happened. <laughs> You cannot believe that's one of the most fun things about doing a movie is when you start talking about the people in other departments and what they've put, you know, like, like that's brilliant to me. I mean, all the things that they go through creating the movie 
you know, it's not just you walking in as the character and all the stuff that you and the directors and the other cast have worked out. It's what they've done. It's right. It's almost like if we could talk to them from the from day one, we'd have a lot more to work with, you know, but we're all busy doing our own stuff. Yeah. I, I thought, geez, I, I would have loved to have heard that while I was shooting it or before I was shooting it. But you know what? It might have messed me up too. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever thought of what the sisters would be doing like today in the modern day if if there was a story about them like today? Oh yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. If we did if, if somebody wanted to do a, a sequel or something like mm -hmm. that. I'd be there in a second. I just, I, I always like to play it down because it's been almost 40 years yeah. and it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. been talked about every freaking year since we did. Yeah. So I don't like to get anybody's excitement yeah, up. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Because every time Catherine and I will say, yeah, you know, someone will ask us about it. Then it goes online. You know, there's talk. Of, no, there's not talk. <laughs> oh, <about> yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not coming from us anyway. Occasionally we'll hear about something, you know, and, and but um um that that's why I'm like that is I don't want to get people's hopes up or started any rumors. Yeah, so, no, I understand. Yeah. Um uh, but, yeah, but uh, I remember a couple of years ago you were trying to get the cheerleader suit back, and I believe you did. I got it back and it yeah, had nice. 23, 23 moth holes in it. Oh, so wow. I found this, yeah. I because I, I told everybody that that was, you know, the fans were so supportive. I said, everybody's getting a digital copy of me wearing that thing mm -hmm. when it comes back. And so I was, I'm going to do that. But at first I had a, I looked at it and I went. And so uh, I took it to several different people that, that restore sweaters and things. And they, they didn't know what it was. And they all said, mm, I think you better just toss this. They don't make that material anymore. I can't fix that. Because it was an 80s blend. Yeah. And I found this one woman who said, yeah, I can fix it. It'll take me some time because they don't make that material anymore. And it did. It took her a while. But when I picked it up, it was just like the first day I saw it. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah. An amazing, I mean, I'm like, no time has passed. <laughs> it's, and I'm a little bit worried about the shoes because, um, you know, I'm afraid tennis shoes. I'm afraid they'll disintegrate if I really yeah. try to wear them. So yeah. we're going to probably, I mean, if I do that, we're probably going to make dummies, but they got to look exactly like the right thing. And that thing's going under glass and it's never coming out <laughs> after that. But it was, uh, I didn't want anyone to think that that was okay with me. It wasn't okay with me. And I, I thought, because, you know, I really love my fans and stuff. And it's a deeper thing for yeah. me than just like, thanks for liking my movie. No. Um, and I, to me, that's such a betrayal if I just went, yeah, I, you know. And and at first, I didn't want to get into why I, I had this uh, a friend of mine take it from for the time being. Um, it's because I had to raise money. My dog needed surgery. Oh. And then, and, and I was broke. So, um, and I don't want to get into that with every time somebody asks me, you know, yeah. what happened? Um, um, and then, you know, I've could have it back whenever I wanted. And my husband, and then I met my husband, I got married and he said, you better get that thing back. I said, oh, it's fine. It's really, it's really fine. You better get that thing back. And sure enough, it was, we were um, a part of, um, my members at the Magic Castle. And one of the magicians wrote to me, he said, I know this is wrong because they're all collectors. I know this is wrong. Your cheerleading outfit just went up for auction. I said, "What?" I mean, I was shaking. My husband said to me, "I've never seen any. I've never seen you cry like that." Wow. And people have died since we've been together. Yeah, I was just. It was such. It was like a rape, you know. It was, like, mm -hmm. and so I tried to get it back. I mean, at first they said, "Well, yeah, you know, we don't want to put stuff up um, for auction if somebody has a problem with it." So I was really, you know. So I talked to the person, and you know, I said, "I wish you wouldn't have done that," and you know. They agreed and we tried to get it back and um, the prop store said, sorry. So um, I suppose there were legal avenues and everything that I could have gone through, but I didn't know it at the time and it would have just stalled the proceedings anyway. Mm -hmm. But I found myself bidding against, so I don't know who it was because it's a it's an anonymous auction. Yeah. And the thing was about probably worth about $5,000. I thought I'm going to eat that money, but I'll have it back. And lesson yeah. learned, you know. Um, but whoever it was, it became everybody dropped out at a reasonable time. 
but one person kept upping me and up it oh, got no. to be insane. Just insane. It's like we're up to ten thousand dollars. I don't wow. have ten. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. somebody said to me, for ten thousand dollars, you better come inside that outfit. <laughs> you better be you in that outfit. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, I know. And so something hit me is that this is all wrong. And so I said, stop. And they went, pause on the phone. Because so it was also COVID. Um, they said, stop. I went, stop. This is crazy. And because I f- figured, you know, hubris on my part, when they find out who they're bidding against, maybe we get rid of this auction thing yeah, and maybe we can work something out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If they're that big of a fan wrong. and they, mean, they know it means up a lot to you, you right. think that's yeah. wrong. Wrong. Oh, no. Yeah. They never showed up. And I tried really hard, and a lot of people tried really hard to figure out what had happened. Um, to this day, I don't know. I'm, you know, there are various theories, but I don't know what happened. But when you buy something in an auction, you have three months to pay for it. And if you don't pick it up and pay for it, so that one day they called me up and they said, Well, nobody picked it up. Do you want it? And I oh. had to pay them. Ten thousand, almost ten thousand, nearly ten thousand dollars to get it. Wow. Yeah, I don't want to accuse anyone of anything, but it almost seems you know like uh, like Bill shitty, uh, Shilling, uh, sh- shill bidding, like they're just trying to get the price. Oh, up. Seemed, uh, it was very much that way. Yeah, it was that very was, much because somebody knew that I wanted think it. Then it would go back to to where it was just the two of you. Well, you know, whether, whether that was at four enough, grand or what? It was like seven, but I, I don't know, but. But um, wow. when, the first woman that, what, what did he say? I think they stopped at like 500 or, or 5,500. And then this person just kept upping me. It was, wow. I mean, it was like going to be over, you know, $11,000 before I was, anyway. Yeah, that's crazy. So, um, but the funny, funny thing is, is that the woman who first woman who said, um, we know that you want it. I made it very clear that I wanted it. Um, um, we, we, they didn't show up, so you can have it, and it's going to be like I think she said forty five hundred dollars. I went, ah. and not only did I get it back, but that's about what you know. That's that's yeah. that's, that's, that's like a reasonable like price, that. yeah. Right. Yeah, that's what and you would ex- said, expect to start with. Somebody, yeah, somebody said uh, she didn't. She, that was a mistake, and they charged me the whole thing that he had run up. Oh, or, I don't know. He, she. I don't. I yeah. honestly don't know. Oh man. Mm-hmm. I never heard a voice or anything like yeah. that. But right. We all, everybody figured that they'd turn up, you know, yeah. anonymously or something. Yeah, if they were bidding like over and over, uh, you would assume that they actually really wanted this. Yeah, or that you know, yeah. meant something to them at least yeah. or something. That's just but obnoxious. Yeah, it was, it was horrible, is what it was. So anyway, Amalia is um, restoring the rest of it so that I mean that sweater. I I, I found the blouse, and you know who found the blouse? Fans found the blouse. Um, because they know exactly what you know, they probably know better than I do. What <laughs> well, it looks like, right. I just put it on, they're staring at it for two hours, they yeah. know exactly what it looks like. Yeah, um, and um, <laughs> so I have it back, and, and I promised, and I didn't forget. As a matter of fact, I was in um Pensacola, and somebody came up to me, and he goes, Um, I, I mean, he was sort of saying, like, Where's my picture? <laughs> I said, I didn't forget. I, I didn't, I know this is taking <laughs> forever and ever and ever. And Amalia is busier than yeah. anything. But, you know, it's like we said, you're not busy for three years. <laughs> we need to finish this up. But I, I do have the sweater. And so it's going to be, she, it, it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be worth waiting for because it's never going anywhere again. It was a one shot deal. Never yeah. going anywhere again until, I don't know, I'll probably yeah. leave it to somebody in my will or maybe leave it to the museum. I don't know. That'd because be my cheerleading outfit from Fast Times is in the Universal City yeah, Museum. That'd be cool. Oh wow! Yeah, and I. Oh, um, so really? That's somebody, great. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and so somebody <laughs> went through the the tour. What was it? A visitor took a picture of it and sent it to me. I went. Oh. And so now <laughs> they have our. Well, it had my name tag. It had Cindy on it, and then Gina's outfit, but it didn't have a name tag on it. Well, since then they made a whole thing about it. So. It's it's like its own little shrine thing of the two outfits. It's very clear what it is, um, but I didn't own that one. I mean, none of the comment. First of all, they sewed it on me because it wasn't a real cheerleading outfit. You know, it was a what did Tom call it? Um, was a magic realistic. I mean, first of all, <laughs> most schools are turquoise and fuchsia, and second of all, no cheerleading outfit fits that way. 
you know, they were trying to make me cute. Right. <laughs> the true, real cheerleading outfits, although they're attractive, they're boxy. Like my one in fast times, that's right. a, that was a real one. And believe you me, they took all that stuff away from us. All the football players, all the cheerleaders, yeah. everybody. Yeah. The minute we were done, because they didn't want anyone stealing them, because those jackets were awesome, right? <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's where it ended up, but, but that's where it belongs. It's different. You know, Tom gave, well, there were two outfits and he gave me one and he gave his daughter one and she used to wear it for Halloween and now she still has hers too. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Isn't that more than you wanted to know about? No, outfit? it's great yeah. though. I'm, no, it's a lot better than what someone says yes or no. Oh, that's an right. That, that was an awesome story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. No, I'm glad okay. to get the UFO Bigfoot says Kelly. Looking forward to see you, uh, seeing you at Carolina Fear Fest. Big fan. Yeah, I can't wait. This is going to be so awesome. It's really going to be fun. It, it's I've never been there before, but um, I keep looking at it, going, yeah, Heather's going to be there, and she's wonderful, and Bill's going to be there. There's a whole bunch of see, we, you know. You kind of you kind of can look at the lineup and go, "Oh, that's going to be fun," because <laughs> you've done a one with them before or something. Yeah, and I mean that. I mean, I mean it's going to be fun. I don't mean it's going to be crazy or anything like that. Neither. Yeah, no, no, it's going to be a good time. Yeah. Um, someone uh, brought up earlier when you were talking about chopping mall, uh, Jim Wynorski, and I know you were trying to do something with uh, Jim. You know, for the last couple of years, did that ever work out? Do you plans to to make a new movie with Jim Wynorski? Oh, you mean the one um, about the the soccer moms? I believe so, yes. He had a great idea about, I thought it was a great idea. And I went and when I went to have my makeup done for the, because he had to show them, um, it was landscape, he had to show them. Nowadays, you also always have to have what's called a lookbook mm. or an approximation of one, or because it's a show me world. And so you can't just pitch something with your voice and by reading, you have to show them exactly. Uh, you know, um, and they're very, very sophisticated. But this is as far as we got. Um, he had some some other women do it too. We we just did a photo shoot. But the thing is, um, soccer mom. But they're actually aliens. So I add, I went and got my makeup done for it, and I had them go make me alien eyes, and they did. Oh my god, they have so much makeup on in those shoots. But alien eyes, and I I think I look like an alien in those pictures, but I love them. So no, we never did anything like that. I think. Most of us just go where the wind blows us, you know, mm -hmm. where the where the where the work is. We don't sit around and like hold our breath until something, um, you know, specific shows its head, rears its head. We go where the work is, and I guess, um, you know, it's and then at some point, you know, like when I'm somebody's grandma or something, they might actually make it. But <laughs> I mean, you you hear the hear those stories all the time. Then like a movie will come out and it'll be, um, I don't know, it'll be some actor. And you find out that, well, it was going to be so-and-so, but then he aged out of it. And then it was going to be so-and-so, but they were too busy. And, you know, the person, the people that are the leads in the movie, um, it, it's just because time went by or, or whatever. Yeah. It's always fun to hear who the original person was going to be. Yeah, it is. Uh, I always like that myself because then yeah. in your mind, it's like, I can't picture that person. But at the same time, you can't <laughs> picture that person because someone else played it. If they right. did play it, maybe you would think, oh, I can't picture the person who ended up in playing it. Uh, right. Playing yeah. Because you know. I know like Lance Henriksen was originally going to be the Terminator uh, with I know, instead that. of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And that would make, I actually think it would be cool, but it would be a completely different film. I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, here's one. And I hate. I just hated when this started coming out because I didn't really know what to say about it. But, um, and th the story has it that um, that Heather um, Lincoln Camp was up for Samantha, and I was up. I I I don't know how far along in the project I got if I was even a serious contender or what. But I also read for Nancy, so we were reading for the same. You know, but just wow. think how different that would have been if I was Nancy and yeah. she was Sam. Think if it went yeah. the other way, right? How weird would that? They'd be to completely different movies. But, you know, she got the franchise, and I just got a low budget movie. But it's fortunately for me still popular. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big difference. Yeah. So, um, you said about uh, you know, uh, back at the, the day, it was fun to do the horror movies. But are you a horror movie fan? Do you like to watch? Oh horror yeah. Movies? Oh good. Well, my when I met my husband, um, and he found he didn't he didn't know who I was, which is weird because, um. Um, he was a horror fan, but for some reason oh, really? he just, yeah. 
Yeah. And so I remember the first time I met him, he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm an actress. And I saw his face go. I went, no, for real. I <laughs> went, for real. <laughs> And I told him what I was getting. He goes, I love horror movies. Do you like horror movies? I said, like them. I'm in them. Yep. And so we always watch like horror movies. Some are good, you know, some are not, yeah. but they're fun no matter if they're, because you, you know what it takes to make a movie? I mean, even if it didn't come off quite the way the person wanted to, mm -hmm. you still, there's something about it. It just, you know, there they there are like putting everything they've got into it. And, and you have to love that. Mm -hmm. it's just something about and, and i think it's because it's so visceral i mean when you're scared that's a huge emotion you know and that we all respond to on a really gut level and the people involved in horror um oh, i did a couple of documentaries just because i became a talking head for a while um about you know horror and mental health and people say i mean there's a there's a meme that says um, two people, two stick figures are having a bad day. And one of them says, let's watch night of the comet. And the other one holds them, <laughs> you know, I mean, th these, this is, these movies are like comfort movies for people. Mm -hmm. well, what do you, why do you think that is, uh, about horror movies specifically? Because the real horror is out there, you know, and we're, um, I mean, you'd have to be a vegetable not to be concerned about the things that are going on in the world at any given point. And we tend to be, um, well, you know, most people grow up with some degree of trauma, you know, and if you're smart and you're sensitive and everything, and um, there's nothing like watching somebody run for their lives. To, you can put it away from you and you can work through it. It's somebody else and it's a movie, but you can work through those emotions and then maybe even they make it and they're alive. Mm -hmm. That's really because you know that you can survive anything, you know. I mean, one of our fans, um, the Comet fans, told us, Catherine and I, that um, he was bullied in high school for being gay. And so he, he used to, the way I got through it is I said, what would Sam and Reggie do? And Catherine and I went, we do the same thing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> if great. I was actually as cool as the characters I play, what would I, what would I do? <laughs> no, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that and, is great. I like that, too. Yeah. And so... um. I know I, I almost can't talk about um, some of the things that that people that, that like the movie and fans have said to me without choking up. It's really yeah. Well, that's real. I'm I'm really happy to see that. I mean, I always love all the guests come. Sometimes guests come on, they actually don't like the movies they've been in, and I understand <laughs> it, but it's like it's a little depressing to me. But I like when people not only like the movies, but like yourself, uh, I could tell that the the fans mean a lot to you because it wasn't. It's cool if they just like the movie, but if they actually, you know, if it means something to them, I think, mm -hmm. how can that not mean something to you then? I don't get through one convention right. or one signing without like tearing up, without crying at <laughs> one point. It's because it's, but you know, it's so, um, you know, those are the days when you think, you know what, no matter what else has been happening, I didn't waste my life because that's what it's all about is touching each other, you know, mm -hmm. making connection with one another and that's why we become actors is that connection um so it was a success one way or the other in some yeah. ways yeah yeah and so uh, i did what i wanted to do with my life yeah. i i love that and when you started the show and you talked about you know some people thought they were the only ones who saw night of the comet mm -hmm. and i, I understand that because yeah, when i, I uh, Tro troy's my brother and so when we were younger um you know a lot of the movies only we like like something weird like basket case or something and you almost right. think like no one else who else likes this movie besides me because yeah. you're in a small town but then yeah. like the internet you realize there's all these yeah. other people that lived in a small town who also liked it and you see mm -hmm. there is uh you know other people who are into this stuff and you realize that it has a following and internet gets a lot of uh bad raps sometimes rightfully so but it is nice to, uh, you know, find other people who are into the things you're into. Well, you asked me, how did we know that it was that people liked it so much? It was the Internet. People would yeah. say, do you know that there's there's shrines to horror movies? There's shrines to you, you know, and I didn't even know what they were talking about. So I looked I thought people are still talking about these movies. And, you know, some of my girlfriends who are back in, you know, making movies again, too, um, they had the same experience. I mean, I remember Barbara was shocked to know that 
people knew what night of the Con uh, uh, what yeah. shopping mall was and the director of this movie said know what it was we grew up with it and she was like i don't know if you feel good about that or bad about that. <laughs> but uh we didn't know that yes we had to be uh, yeah. told i'm one did. of those people so <laughs> oh yeah and uh, uh speaking like other people that you know from the movie so what was it like to be in um sorority babes in the slime bowl bowl or rom which is a very long name part two <laughs> for, the, for the directorial debut for uh brink stevens you know how many times I mistyped that when I was. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got that title wrong, and I'm in it more, more than anybody else. Well, I love Brink. I mean, I've seen her around all my life, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And she's really smart, and she's very composed, you know. I mean, people would say, "What's Brink like as a director?" And I say, "A bomb could go off and behind her, and she wouldn't <laughs> blink. She'd be like, okay, let's go with the.' I mean, she is unstoppable." <laughs> And you have to be when you're going that fast, you know. And I mean, um, um, she was wonderful. She's just wonderful. Um, she, you know, Brink, Brink is very reserved. It's not like, um, you know, she doesn't run around. Freak, no matter what would be going on, she would not be running around freaking out or anything. And yeah. she has to, when she speaks about stuff, she speaks to you personally. It's like she's not telling the crowd. She's telling you something. You know, she would never be like, ah, <laughs> at all. I can't even see that happening. Although I could be wrong, but my experience of her is that. Um, mm -hmm. It was a really weird thing because um, I didn't want to play Linnea's. I said, I don't want to. That's Linnea's part. They're they're going to oh. set me on fire if I try to. I'm not doing, <laughs> I'm not doing, she said, no, we don't. We agree. We're, we're not making you. Uh, we're going to make her your sister. You her sister. I said, OK. All right. And it was kind of at the last minute. And so um, I said, okay, if, as long as I'm her sister, because, oh no, that's, you know, that's, uh, some things are just somebody else's thing and you mm -hmm. just don't mess with it, you know? Um, um, and that, so you know, Linnea Quigley's, a, you know, that's a, it's a, a fellow horror icon like yourself. It's a, everyone exactly. knows Linnea. Oh, bigger. I mean, she's the scream queen, you know? <laughs> I, I always wanted to be kind of like Scream Queen adjacent, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're more like the the final girl because you're, you're the one like, oh, yeah. like, shooting people and stuff. So. Yeah. Although, you know, these days, um, and everyone always told me to, you know, if you didn't want that, per I said, I can't, I didn't make up that persona myself. It was kind of laid on me and, uh, and I like it. First, I didn't like the final girl thing because I thought, what's a final girl that's making the monster the the star and, and we're just all like cardboard cutouts <laughs> that get picked off the final girl. Come on. It, it just seemed like it reduced it to such a board game or something, but now I liked it, you know, and, and they'd say, you know, if you died once in a while, you'd make a lot more movies. I said, that's probably true, but now I can't die. <laughs> and, and, you know, I mean, I've said before, I don't think, I don't think they're going to like it if you kill me, but you know, I have nothing to say about it. And sure enough, <laughs> You were right. They didn't like it that I killed you, but I'm gonna. Ha I have to like age out of that final girl thing. And you know, people that die in horror work all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe the final woman. Final woman. That's how you get. You get yeah. Out of it. But yeah. no, I, I understand what you say. But I like that. It's like a rule: don't kill animals in your movie, and don't kill Kelly Maroney. People will, will be. Yeah, I like that. that. <laughs> Advice like to live by. <laughs> I thought it was cool too. I mean, um, it, everybody has their own rules though um, about how they're going to kill you, like what's acceptable. Like um, I, somebody I know will not be beheaded because it's gross. Oh, you know, so everybody finds their own sea legs as to what is, they're okay with and what they're not. Yeah. It's has there any situation? Has there anything come up in a movie that you you didn't want to do? Uh, not just you didn't like the movie, whatever. Like there was a scene or something like ah, I don't really want to do this. Oh yeah, but normally I just say I can't do it. I don't <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, once a long, it's been a while ago. Um, I was an animal abuser with no remorse. I said I can't do it. I don't want yeah. it. I I don't want to. Do yeah, it. that would be the worst. And then um. Um, well, Chad's come up with a couple of things that I just said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. like, I've seen his movie, so I can imagine. No, <laughs> I'm, not, 
I can't say anything because it's probably be a spoiler, but those two of mine is like, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, because you know, you're comfortable with something or you're not, and this, um, um, and you have to, it's a case by case situation, yeah, yeah. In another instance, given the story or given the um, the, the idea behind it, it might be different, but you just don't know until you've till you've read the script and see what they're going to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to mention that I, I like that you named your production company Badass Cheerleaders, uh, Cheerleader <laughs> Production. I think that's you know, that I went, great. I went through 20 different names <laughs> and so I, and I sat there and I read to you know my friends and even a numerologist to see if it was a good one or not. I went through all 20 and everybody to a person said, Badass Cheerleader. I was like, oh, come yeah. on, you guys. Can I stop being the badass cheerleader? I mean, my God, you know. No, you can't. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> well, two well, cheerleaders in a row. And yeah, that was kind of poor planning. <laughs> but it wasn't planned. Um, yeah, but no matter what else I came up with, no, that's cheerleader. That's the one. one. So I thought, if these people, all they all can't be wrong, you uh, know. Yep. So. I see that I love what you did there. You put my name. Um, yeah, yeah, it's up website. here, yeah. and it's uh, right from your website, which uh, I know. Which I, thought, I really like the I like the the font that you used on the website. So. Yeah, that's my font. I just I I noticed it right away, but I wanted to say something, make sure that I mentioned it. All right. Well, I appreciate cool. I appreciate that that you brought it up. So I, I like. I know. That. And, I notice all these little things. That people might think it's a little thing. I don't think it's a little thing. I, I appreciate that. I try to make the each show, uh, you know, personal to the person that's on. So I like that. I noticed. And so does, um, has your husband seen Night of the Comet and Chopping Mall since then? Oh, you bet. <laughs> 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 well, he'd never seen them. He, um, th they had a thing at the Egyptian where they screened both of them in one night. And so he had to see them. And then, um, is that the only time? I know for sure he's seen both of them at least once. But he sees them on the online all the time. So I think even if he'd never seen it through osmosis, he's seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right through all the clips and yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully he likes the movies. Though. Oh yeah. I mean, right. he's like a horror guy. Yeah. I, you know, it's everybody's dream to find meet a girl who's who's into horror. And I said, Oh yeah. I didn't even know that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't well, get much I... more into horror than well, you can't. I mean, people in our crowd can, but in, in general in gen pop, yeah, is it, yeah. <laughs> you can't yeah. find somebody that's yeah. it. So that's also it. on your website, kellymaroney.com. Uh you got a lot of cool things that people people can see meet you, you know, at different uh festivals, conventions, and get stuff. But if if for some reason you can't, there's a lot of cool stuff on your website. Including mm -hmm. sign baby killbots, which I yes. think is pretty awesome. Oh, that's I wild. love them. And the head goes and the arms go. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> and then the artist signs the back and I sign it. And then also I started having the killbot sign it too. Oh, really? Well, nice. he got mad at me, so yeah. It was like yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I always post stuff <laughs> like there's a picture because Winorski will all, always make these funny things, and so he he made a picture of me and the killbot looks like we're waving and so sometimes i'll post that we're coming out of madame woo's and you know he's running for the front from um the paparazzi but i got a smile out of him anyway and i just <laughs> so stupid yeah. stuff like that. so i i uh, anthropomorph anthrop you know when you make something a human being and it's not anthrop yeah. From whatever it is yeah you got it we were at it yeah. very good all it's right uh long. and and i'm a big fan of chopping law and we talked a lot uh with you about chopping law in our first interview so uh if people want to hear more about chopping law you can check that out but i'm a huge fan of the movie always Thank was you. i think some it's people very like fun. It better. some people think that this is that's my the best movie they ever that i've done that they like yeah, I, I really like both uh night of the comets for some yeah. reason uh night of the comet when i was uh in like a, a younger in the 80s they showed it a lot of a lot on basic. I don't know if it was basic, maybe HBO. Yeah, but cable, for some reason, right. it was one that they would show all the time, and I remember watching it, you know, so mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. Where I think Chopping yeah. Mall is more one that I had to rent. 
Mm, it was on TV ad nauseum at one point too, but no, after, <laughs> after it was second string. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, cable was where it really got a foothold. Both of, both of those things. I, I think a lot of movies get a foothold on cable because mm -hmm. uh, um, it's a funny thing too. I met a psychic one time. And it was around the time I'd done that movie. And I said, so what, what's going to happen with my movie? And, and he goes, uh, um, it's going to have a bigger run on a smaller. Um, but he didn't know what he was describing because we oh. didn't have streaming cable yet, really. Oh, wow. That's actually really interesting. He didn't even know what he was yeah. trying to say. But I thought back about it later. And I went, he was probably trying to describe cable. Yeah. <laughs> And he didn't know what it was, like Nostradamus. You know, he's trying to explain. Exactly. That's actually what I was exactly was thinking because he would try to explain to the eclipses yeah. and the devil yeah. comet. Because how would you explain it? You know, if you you know before it happens, uh, especially something like streaming, it would be hard to to really put yeah. that into words. You know? Well, he was like it's smaller and it's on a lot. And I mean, you, you know, he, I don't remember exactly what he said, but clearly. Yeah, you know, he didn't know what it was. And uh, Night of the Comets, uh, up until just a couple days ago, was on the Criterion channel, which is wasn't pretty, that pretty, something? Yeah, that's awesome. Wow, I now have two films on the Criterion channel. Fast Times is there too. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's I don't know. I that's an honor to me. You know, the, oh, oh, yeah. should be honored. Yeah, I think that's so. pretty amazing. Definitely. Yeah, and it all yeah. ties back into the badass cheerleader. Now yeah. it's, they're almost kind yep. of telling you you made the right choice with the name. They're like they're, they're both from the <laughs> Criterion. Well, it was the only choice because nobody else gave any of the other things <laughs> at the, the time of day. Everybody said no, it's that one, and you know, <laughs> ten people can't be wrong. So I yep. just, you know, I mean, there's a fine line between like not, you know, you have to embrace it, you know, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes yeah. you're just going to be stuck with that. I'll be, you know. 95 and i'll be the badass cheerleader and you know <laughs> there are a lot of worse things that could happen to a yeah, person <laughs> of course. Of course. i think that's kind of cool actually yeah <laughs> was it was it always called chopping mall uh like no. uh, when you first get the script was it called something else it was called okay first of all it was called robot and i was told <laughs> okay um robert short who had just done daryl hannah's tale or something it was you know hot stuff we're going to shoot it at the Beverly Center, and it's going to be called the Robot. And I thought, cool, classy project. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, but there's something wrong with the elevators or the. Um, um, Wonorski can say exactly what it was, but they couldn't use the Beverly Center. So, but luckily for us, and you know, there's a lot of movies at Sherman Oaks Galleria, and the reason for that is the guy who owned it was a big movie buff. So anytime somebody wanted to shoot there, he'd be like, yeah. That's okay. the only reason there's so many movies over there is he would let us <laughs> yeah. use this mall because who else is going to let you use their mall? No one. So, yeah, um, um, so then that was fine. But then um, they started floating these other names like Killbot. And I thought, mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. We're all getting nervous. You know? And then Chopping Mall, yeah. <laughs> and I, I love that there is actually no chopping in Chopping Mall. It doesn't take away from true, the movie. I, just, I think it kind of adds to the... Every uh, every conversation online or otherwise, at one point somebody says, "There's no chopping in it." False advertising. No, there's <laughs> not. <laughs> but what it, what it tested, yeah, what it tested as as killbots, um, it it didn't do well. Mm -hmm. Nobody liked. I mean, it didn't draw anybody in. And you know, Roger's the master of knowing how to put butts in seats, and so he said no, and. I think this might be urban legend, but the legend has it that they're in the um, editing room and a janitor walks in. And he's laughing at the movie. He goes, um, why didn't you call it Chopping Mall? And they were like, Bing! <laughs> I don't know if that actually it, it could happen, could not. Who knows? But it's a good way to explain what happened. There. I mean, it's and when you hear the name, to me, for someone like me, uh, you have to watch it. I was like, oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. The cover and, yeah. But then it's it's double misleading because every time they draw the shopping bag, there's eyeballs and arms. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, oh, yeah. They totally yeah. mislead you. It's a total um, gaslight. Complete. <laughs> there's no chopping in this. <laughs> <laughs> They're always so indignant, too. There's no chopping in this. <laughs> 
Uh, uh, what am I? Sorry, my fault. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, were you around Mary Warnoff much at all? You know, I had a scene. She always scared me because she. I, I was, she is very intimidating. I, 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 I hosted a panel with her for it was for uh, the whatever anniversary it was of rock and roll high school, and I was oh, actually yeah. kind of intimidated by her, but she was super oh, nice. So she's oh, really good. Yeah. So here's what I mean. I had seen her. You know, I had the scene with her where she was gonna kill me in the in the end of the comic, and I was scared of her because we had this scene together. You know, I figured she was gonna be. I don't know what I thought she was gonna be. I don't know. But she was so gentle, and so I mean, I just I did not cry during the scene. She was so kind, and I did not see that coming. And it's always fun when you're playing a scene and the other actors doing something you did not see coming because yeah. I bet. then it then it's spontaneous. You know, it's not like you're I'm going to do this and you're going to do that, and I'm gonna, yeah. you know, and then it becomes like not lifelike. But I didn't see that coming, and she really. You can see it on my face. All of a sudden, I become five years old. <laughs> so she just really, I think there might have been a tear, something, and it's not in the movie, but I think I might have been tears on my face when I shut my eyes, too. I don't know. It was really, she was extraordinary. But, you know, yeah. you see her, and I mean, she's scary. I don't, I don't yeah, really see that. Everything, I think her stature, she has a lot oh, of confidence. Yeah, She's, I don't know. Just, yeah, yeah well, the presence is very intimidating. She's very now. powerful and she takes no shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I think yeah. you can tell that just by looking at her, which uh, I appreciate. Yeah. 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 Um, but I never got to know her any, any more than that. I mean, the day that she was on the set for, for Chopping Mall, I had no idea that she and Paul were going to be in it. But I wasn't there. So oh, I didn't I get to see her. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that that whole thing too. They were supposed to be dragging a horse through the mall, and <laughs> that's where they drew the line because you know there's going to be of course Kubala, <laughs> no horses. Yeah, ah, that, that's a good idea for a documentary actually about that mall and about if the guy was a horror fan. What? what oh, he yeah? in. That that would be a fun oh, little documentary. I think that would it be really a good one. I think. Yeah, we yeah. should look him up too because, oh my God, yeah. I mean, what an interesting person. Yeah, and then find out how many movies are linked to that and everything. That mm, that right. would be interesting. Right, because I mean it was so crazy when we were shooting it. They didn't close the mall. So I mean, for us or anything, and I don't know if they closed it for anybody else, but um so we'd wait for the mall to close and then we would go in and shoot all night. And then we had wow. to have everything put back the way it was <laughs> so that the stores could reopen before anybody else got there for the day. So wow. that the stores could open as usual. How we did that, I will never know. But huh. it's the magic of Roger Corman's <laughs> guides, you know. I, I can mean, imagine, yeah. And but, the only thing that we really destroyed, believe it or not, was there's a little, um, they had this person called Pat, and the, Pat was overly concerned with the post. So guess what we ruined? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't ruin it, but there there was a there was a, a gouge in it in, in Pat's post. But if she had, if um, sometimes, sometimes when you're overly concerned about something, you can actually cause it to happen. If oh, absolutely, <laughs> yep, yeah. That, uh, I mean, unbelievably so because we we set fire. I mean, we, we I mean, what didn't we do in there? You know? <laughs> yeah. Again, about the documentary, be interesting to get his side of the story with the horse and some oh, other yeah. things that maybe he just had to like. No, we can't do this in the uh, in the mall. But so I don't know. I, I really think this could. Yeah, work. I'll be your cameraman when you guys do the documentary. Um, I'll, I'll. That's a wonderful. Along. Like, you know what? We should actually pursue that. That is a great idea. Good. I can't believe no one's done it. Every we should do it. Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay. I'll, I will look into this after the yep. after the show. You know, we have witnesses too. No, yeah, right. Comfortable. They don't steal our idea though. Yeah, I know. Someone's <laughs> gonna run off and do it now. Yeah, but it holds us accountable too. What about that thing you said you were gonna do? That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah, There's true. talks online that you know. Well, like so you know, it's been three years now, and I still haven't heard anything about. <laughs> On this date. Back in 2004, <laughs> like three quarters of the way through, you said. <laughs> it's so, actually, oh. and then they give you the timestamp. <laughs> Along those lines, so you were filming at night at, at the mall. Um, 
How about for Night of the Comet? Was it ever hard to do scenes in the street and have you make sure there's no one around, like in the background? And yeah, and now, especially since we went to um, 4K, you can see the people. Oh, really? Oh, really? Whereas before, <laughs> I mean, like my outfits a couple times are a little bit more risque than I thought they were because in 4K you can actually see, and I would never oh. noticed it. <laughs> like, I, I had a, a an eight by ten, and I had I, I had to take it off the website because now it's kind of like too much but <laughs> in regular film it didn't look like that yeah, yeah. Too, you know you that's some, too much that's interesting because i've noticed not uh, so much that but like sometimes when they brighten up horror movies they take too much of the shadow away and i don't think it works as well but I never thought of, you know, uh, other things that, you know, yeah. it, it affects the movie. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the most fun thing is when people look for bloopers, right? Yeah. And so, like, in the beginning of Night of the Comet, um, we're shooting the thing where she, she, um, my sister comes to the house and then she's trying to tell me what happened and I don't believe her. And I, I pick up this leash and I go, Muffy, right? Uh, then there's dust there. We made that up and we thought it was so, uh, boy, we, could write, we thought that was the funniest thing we, anyone had ever done in their lives, right? And so then I had, I kept the leash and I had it wrapped around my neck and I, because I'm, I'm, you know, a good student. I was always a good student. I said, this is not, this does not match. I didn't have this on um, for the master and I didn't have it on for some of the takes. And, um, and Wayne Crawford said, so what? I went, because it's not going to match. And he goes, that's the fun of it. If you don't give people bloopers to find, then you're taking the enjoyment away from them because it's worth it. We're leaving it. Who cares? <laughs> He's a guy who made a few movies, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know I, I like that because it's almost, does he really mean that? Or is it well, more like, it. Ah, it'll, it'll, you know, whatever. No, that's my excuse that for not worrying well, about it too much. That, you know, when that is, is um, when somebody like goes pale and then they say, We'll fix it in post. Then you know they don't really oh, mean it. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But no, he was like so. <laughs> except for this one time, we were watching the dailies, and we were downtown, and all of a sudden he loses it, and I'm like, "What happened? What happened? What happened?" Well, there those window washers. <laughs> Down there, like Christmas Day or whatever it was, you can see what the Oh no! <laughs> In those days, we didn't have CGI. That was the end of that shot. Yeah, we couldn't use it. <laughs> wow! But I mean, you can see, like, um, you can see when when uh, Catherine's coming out of the um, out of the movie theater, you can see cars and stuff and people in, in the window. Um, there's there's a few things you can see. I haven't really sat down and looked at everything, but they're on online every single yeah. mistake, and I think it's fun too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so for one, I, thing, there's one in Double Indemnity that I wonder. If, I sometimes think I'm the only person that's noticed it. Fred McMurray has a scene with her. Um, he's got his wedding ring on. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and he's. I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they're fun to see. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I do want to mention quick that uh, my friend Mark, who runs Coolidge Corner Theater in Brookline, uh, he does midnight movies every weekend, Coolidge After Midnight. I'm wearing the hat. And uh, this Saturday, on the original 35 millimeter is Night of the Comet. So, wow. so if you're in the Boston area, come out and see oh, it. Oh, wow. That's time. great. I wish I was in the, I mean, my husband's from Boston. So if hmm. I was well, in the Boston area, that'd be different. But I hope you have a wonderful time. Still seeing it, yeah. Yeah, think it, yeah. and it almost closed during. The, it's been there since the twenties. It's a really cool old theater. Almost it closed is. during the pandemic. They stayed open because fans uh, helps keep it open, which is great. Mm -hmm. and so it's doing well. So I wanted to give them a shout out. But. It's really oh, touching. Yeah. In, in Santa Rosa too, they kept the theater open. And this happened like in spots spots around the country where people just said, "No, we're not closing our theater." That's great. And they That's did everything theater. like. Yeah, yeah, it was isolated incidents, but they all had the same idea. It's like we're not letting this yeah. happen, and it's just the you know some. It's like a church in a way. Our yeah, 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 and you know, you know, almost closed for good is you yeah. know, but and it was there like almost a hundred years. I think a hundred years this year. So, oh yeah, uh, yeah, it'd be terrible because once those kind of 
uh, old theaters closed, they don't reopen. That's it. You know, it would be somebody yeah, that's it. Once and... they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to have a real tragedy here in Hollywood. Um, but Quentin Tarantino came around and oh. he, um, Spielberg too. They saw this happening and they started buying them up and renovating them. And if they oh, hadn't done that, they'd be gone. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we owe them a debt of gratitude. Yeah. Um, you know where else it's playing, right? Probably as we speak, um, Fear Fest. Oh, oh nice. Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. yeah. It's the opening night of Fear Fest. They they're playing that, and it was going to be Joe Bob and Darcy, but Joe Bob's ill, and I don't know what's the matter with him. Oh, but we, wish, we wish him uh, getting well really fast. Absolutely. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah. Um, so play Joe Bob. <laughs> I oh, almost okay. missed myself, but that's fine. Yeah. That, uh, how um, I know you've met him and everything, but how close are you to to Joe Bob, and how important was he to a lot of those movies uh, of the eighties? Because um, I know, oh. like Basket Case, he was a big proponent of. And, yes, yeah. he was. Yeah, something. He's he's really rec uh, rescued a lot of those movies from obscurity. Mm -hmm. Um, and as Dar and you know, as Darcy the ma mail guard had to point out online uh, recently. You know, these movies, are, we don't expect you to, to like them all the time. The point is we're yeah. showing them. It's, you know, it's, we're not curating films. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny because she had to explain it. And, you know, I mean, people get into like, I didn't care for that film. And it's like. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, most people maybe didn't. I've, yeah i've seen many movies i don't care for but yeah. sometimes that's fun yeah. too especially uh a platform like that because even if you don't like the movie you can hear them talk about it and, and uh, the live <laughs> format you can interact with folks on uh, mm -hmm. it's a good time yeah yeah you know and um and there's always one foo thing when he does the totals yeah. That, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that cracks me up too. Yeah. Well, in the eighties, I had heard of Joe Bob, but I didn't know what he looked like. And so um in my mind, he was like kind of like this gross guy with you know, <laughs> around with a beer belly and you know, talking about boobs and and I just right. thought, ew, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> he probably will embarrass me or something. And then he comes back with this show and says, and I look back at these old shows. He's a babe. <laughs> yeah. a handsome, handsome guy. And here I, I mean, how wrong can you get, you know? <laughs> and then John himself is like one of the smartest men I've ever met in my life. Oh my God. He's, well, you, you can see. Joe Bob's yeah. smart too. Joe Bob is just like a, a more re relaxed, like um, colorful version of John. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the yeah. character. So yeah. uh, I, I've mentioned Basket Case a few times. So uh, when they did Basket Case on, on uh, Joe Bob, the recent one, you know, last drive in, and I didn't watch it live. And someone told me, like, a couple people, like, Neil, he says, like, the exact same thing you said in, in this video about um, about Kevin Van Hentenrick. I was like, oh, really? And so when I had Joe on, I'd mentioned something to him. And he actually told me that he watched a video of mine with uh, with Kevin Van Hentenrick. Oh, wow. Because wow. Annabelle and I went, this is a kind of long story, but Kevin Van Hentenrick, after he stopped doing movies, um, he became a stonemason and he carved stone in uh, in Hunter Mountain and near Woodstock. Wow. They're so amazing. We had him on the his, show. You've got to see like his statues yeah, are so beautiful. Wow. And every summer he does a free seminar for like two weeks where he'll teach you the ancient art of stone carving. And so Annabelle and I went out and we learned to carve stone with Kevin cool. and we made a video. And Joe, Joe Bob watched that video and actually got like some research about oh, wow. about uh, Kevin for the show. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then since then, some people said, well, he should have at least credited you on the show. And I'm like, yeah, probably. I guess. But it's still cool that that he ended, that he watched it. And uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, well, I, that I finally well, one there was a there was a, a situation where we were all going to do this movie and then it um actually somebody made a mini documentary of it called screwed in scranton let's put it that way and joe bob was going to be there but then something told because he's in the he wasn't born yesterday something told him there was something that was wrong and so he, okay. one of his flights was messed up he turned around and went home smartest thing anyone ever did so we're all like running to the airport making sure that they, we could still get our airline so we didn't get stranded in in scranton right Anyway, so there's a, um, so I almost met him then, but but did not. And then 
um, the Chattanooga Film Festival, which is like the coolest festival ever. Um, you really got to check it out. I mean, it, it's it's cool. It was cool a couple of years ago, and now that people know it's cool, it's even cooler. Um, I they um, brought me in. They gave me an award. And they had Joe Bob present it. And that's when I got to meet him. And I got to see his oh, show. Okay. Rednecks, you know, because he did the Rednecks. And um, yeah. um, that's when I really actually met him and met him. And then after that, um, we did a convention together. So by the time I was on the show, I had spoken to him a couple of times. So it yeah. wasn't just like, hello, you know. <laughs> In fact, he, they, um, he wrote to me on Twitter. X, excuse me, Twitter. Um, <laughs> um, and I didn't think it was him. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, I didn't. And so um, um, I was talking to, to uh, Diana and she goes, no, that was him. That was him. I said, well, well okay. I'm glad I wasn't like rude or anything. <laughs> it's like, oh, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I didn't do any of that, but I, yeah. I just, it's not, not, not him. but it was so, and that was like really fun. And so, yeah. I mean, that's quite an honor for anybody to be on, on their show because, you know, I mean, everybody that goes on there is like, I, I just think the whole thing is fascinating. His rants are fascinating. Mm -hmm. Everything oh, that yeah. comes out about these movies are fascinating. And his guests are, you know, I don't know if he makes us fascinating, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, um, but so I asked Felissa because she's been on quite a bit, Felissa Rose. Mm -hmm. And she said, just yeah. don't bore Joe Bob, whatever you do. Don't <laughs> bore him. Because he was the trying secret. To, yeah. And so I thought, okay, don't be boring, right? Because <laughs> then he was telling me something about, uh, about uh, Felissa Rose when she was on. I mean, I don't get easily embarrassed, but I was, she made me blush. And I went, oh boy, that's not okay. Well, how am I going to top that? I'm not making you blush. <laughs> <laughs> I did get a little bit because I went and sat on his lap. And the reason I did that was because I heard in the background, I heard the producer saying, I can't get a two shot. Or the, or the director was saying to somebody, I, I can't get a two shot of them. And I went, well, I'll give you a two shot. That's why I walked out of it. And he didn't know I was going to do it because I didn't know I was going to do it. But um, yeah. it started us off good and spontaneous, I think. Yeah. Oh, no, good. it's great. I'm a big fan. And um, I'm glad that it's on. I'm glad. It I remember the uh, the first season was like, it was that was just going to be it. It wasn't going to, you know, boy, be more seasons. And he gives a really emotional speech at the end. And then yeah. uh, I'm so, so happy that it's come back and we get to see more of him. Yeah, I mean, when I first met him, he had just shot the first season, and they, I think they were just going back into the second one. They just found out they were doing another one. And the way they shoot those things, I mean, uh, almost anybody else would be dead of exhaustion. Yeah, but he just, oh, really? just does it. Yeah. Well, they do it in segments, too. So, for example, when I was on, they had already shot part of one for the next season. It's something about being a vegetarian. I'll just put it that way. But they'd already shot one part of it. Yeah. And it was they were going to shoot the rest of it the following week. So that was the first time I, I mean, because I watch, I'm just, you know, I'm just as um, as dumb as the next person. I'm like, oh, they must have done this all in one day. Right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah he, he had a thing, too, where he didn't want people to realize that it wasn't live. He didn't want th yeah. that, you know, that illusion. And he was really not happy when it, it would look like we're going to have to bust ourselves here because they're going to know it's not live. Yeah, yeah. He oh. really didn't like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like he didn't want you tw tweeting, I mean, Xing or whatever we're doing. He didn't want you because then it's obvious that you're not there. Right, right, right. right. Oh, yeah, and yeah. He wanted it to all look like it was happening live. And I think that's really smart. But I mean, in the time, especially during COVID, when everybody was, you know, going through it. He really got that. The mutant family really came together and was really saving people's lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've heard that too. Um, like in the documentary, a couple of documentaries um, I, I did, and also um, just from people talking to me. You know, that movie saved my butt. I've heard that about several movies. You know, not the ones that I'm just the ones I'm in, but several. Is that kind of close knit horror community? There's a there's a nerve there. That other genres do not have. I mean, yeah. you know, I always well, say the reason there's so many conventions that are dedicated to horror, and there's not mm -hmm. like a a romantic no, comedy convention or something. Exactly. Right. There's no. Right. Yeah, yeah. But this is a. It's a. It strikes a nerve. It's a deep, deep, um, 
visceral thing in us. And it's kind of like the walking wounded in a weird way. I mean, we're always the weird ones. It's like when no one else liked horror about us, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we recognize each other. <laughs> and that yeah. within that, there's that permission of, I know you're weird. It's cool. Don't try. Don't even bother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. yeah. You're not don't practice it at all. We're good. We yeah. already know. And you know, yeah. I'm already, I'm not even going to pretend I'm not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a and very accepting community too. Cause I think some people before they go to one, they think everyone's uh, covered in tattoos maybe or whatever, but it's all different people, but everyone shares, you know, the same love of, of hor the mm. horror genre. Well, yeah. some of them are t covered with tattoos. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. of the scariest people, they're dressed as Satan. <laughs> right, right. yeah. They'll come up to you. And, and it is kind of scary, you know? And so you'll say, well, what do you do? And they go, oh, I'm so... Jesus Christ, this kid is popping back up. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Okay. Um, um, so you, you go, well, what do you do? And, and they go, um, I, I work at an animal shelter or I work in hospice. <laughs> the sweetest people ever, but this is the, you know, their thing. Never, no. you know, you can't just because somebody looks like that. Don't judge a book by their cover, I guess. You know. Yeah, yeah, I agree, hundred percent. And a lot of horror people, animal came up a few times here. Big animal, uh, Linnea has, you know, uh, oh, helps yeah. a lot of animals. Troy here has a lot of animals. He's got three dogs, two cats, a tortoise. <laughs> I have two cats right now. Um, but yeah, I am too. I'm big on the animals, and oh yeah, you know, you can kill. A crowd of people, but don't kill the dog. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, where can people follow you to see, uh, you know, your appearances and what's going on with you? Oh, okay. Well, my website, which you already thank, thank you yeah. for mentioning, it's just kellymaroney.com. Um, there's how you spell it: <laughs> K-E-L-L-I-M-A-R-O-N-E-Y, and it's hard name to spell right. So, um, um, you, you know. If you don't find it, it's because you spelled it wrong. Because it's pretty, pretty obvious. Yeah. It's pretty. I mean, it's easy to find. And then on social media, I'm just my name on everyone. I did not make this hard. Okay. You know, it's like I whatever. appreciate that. Yeah. I yeah. do too. I mean, why make it hard? Sometimes so, people be on this. You know, puppy. What eight seven? I'm like, yeah, they try cool, to get too clever. How the hell am I supposed yeah. to? <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes you don't want to. I mean, actually, I've grown to regret that because I always use my real name, and I think, oh. That way, whenever I say, if I participate in this conversation, people will mm. know it's me. Whereas, you know, oh, I'm not all an angel or something like that. I'm Kelly <laughs> <laughs> Maroney. No um, anonymity that way. Yeah. Right, right. But so, in on, um, let's see, uh, Instagram, Kelly Maroney, um, Twitter, Kelly Maroney, Facebook, Kelly Maroney. But then I have Actress Kelly Maroney, which is my more of my career page. And then there's a fan club called the, uh, Facebook group, Kelly Murray Facebook group. And I'm I sort of am on TikTok, but I haven't done any TikToks yet. All right. Yeah. I, 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 the wall, I guess. Yeah, I joined TikTok. I don't post a lot there, but I probably should. But, well, there's it's it's an it's an art doing that TikTok thing. I probably I probably overly read about it and went, oh, this is hard. <laughs> right, you know. Right. But it, it doesn't have to be hard. Um, yeah. But I made it hard. <laughs> I did. I made, I made it hard for myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I just kind of got intuited. It was just so much at once, you know, with the reels and everything. And I mean, yeah. everything that Instagram is hitting you with constantly. And I went, oh, great, another platform. Mm -hmm. you know? But I, I mean, I think I, I watch it all the time. I'm always watching TikTok. <laughs> Working. <laughs> But that's where I am, and I'm I'm on all my platforms a lot, and I answer. Yeah. yeah. Well, this was very fun to talk with you again, and I'm sorry I actually kept you here longer than than the hour. Oh, I don't even know what time it is. My, yeah. my I was just like talk and talk and talk so that I'm not the person going, uh huh. No, yeah. I I well, this is our 19th oh, year doing the show, part. so we might very much appreciate that because uh uh the point of the show is people to talk, not to say yes or <laughs> yeah. no. Or, mm -hmm. I sometimes have no, I mostly don't know what I'm talking about. So, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I hear it back on the, yeah. oh, shoot. What, what the? No, what I, think, I, this, <laughs> I um, think this was really fun and interesting. Yeah, you kept okay. us entertained. That's all, you know, oh, that's all we can ask for. That's my job. Yeah. yeah Very fun job. and entertaining. Good. Yes. Good. Facebook user. I'm not sure who that is, but it's, you know, they Facebook like it. User? Yeah. It just said Facebook user. Um, um, it pops up the name on 
this is being streamed all over on all the different social media pages. So right. uh, on YouTube, it'll tell me who it is uh, on Twitch and every, but on Facebook, it usually just comes up Facebook users. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure. Even if they have their name on it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm not really positive why, but I'm glad that they can watch it wherever. So. Yeah. I yeah. I, I need to do lives and stuff like that. I haven't done that either. So. I've been remiss, but you know, when you're running around doing other things, then sometimes it just it, it falls by the wayside. And I know people really yeah. like it. So, you know, it's a big part of what we do now. Mm -hmm. um, that's how we entertain people is on social media because that's where they are. And so that's what they want to see. Yep. And so it's, you know, I got to be more um, conscientious about that. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, you're on all the different platforms, so you're out there. Yeah. So that's very cool. You've got stuff mm -hmm. out there, yeah. which is good. You interact, and you're. Ha I, I'm, I appreciate that you uh, that you appreciate your fans. I, I like that. Oh yeah, yeah. that's very really cool. I, yeah, they're everything. I wouldn't be doing anything if I didn't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they make it happen. Um, oh, I should mention one thing because it's really kind of funny and goofy. So. We made this movie called Slasher Size. Well, I didn't oh, make I did it. want to bring that up too, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't make it. I was, I was, uh, they, they put out a call for all of us and, um, um, any final girls or, you know, mm -hmm. that, that wanted to do this. And so I didn't really know what, what, what I was doing. I knew that I was showing up and, and it was kind of like a final girl thing. I thought we were going in and it was the 80s, but we were us and, you know, grown ups now. And, and, um, we were going into, a rescue mission. That's what I thought it was, you know, and, but um, I didn't even know that there were workouts in it, oh. <laughs> but everybody's in this thing. Felicia's in this thing. Darcy, the mall girl's in this thing. Um, Lisa Wilcox and um, Tiffany. Um, um, who else? Jesus. Um, um, Did there's you see a million people. Was in it? No, she's not in it. She's not. Okay. No, I would think she would be because she was the one who had the exercise. Yeah, it sounds like that kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, but she, I, to my knowledge, she's not. Um, but okay. people would ask me, like somebody asked me, is Brink in it? And I went, not that I know it, but, you know, they really didn't tell me anything. <laughs> the day that I found out, I mean, they said stuff for me to repost. And that's when I found out there was, or it was exercise in it. So <laughs> I was dumb as usual. They don't tell me much. That's okay. I just show up. But I, I thought that. I, I was having fun with it, and I what I've seen of it so far is that I think it's really going to be fun. Okay, so, good. Yeah, uh, uh, Sarah French is in it, who's a, a newer um, yeah. dream queen. Oh, Tiffany uh, Shepes, you may have mentioned her, Lisa. Oh, I did. Yeah. 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 yeah, I, I yeah think yeah, I didn't really cool fun that. cast. Tiffany, she uh, Tiffany Shepes. Sorry, yeah. I, I don't think I said her last name. There's a couple Tiffany's, I suppose. So, Let me make sure I got the <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, I She's think that's awesome. probably the main one, though. Yeah, that's uh, oh, that sounds very fun. And so, I'm looking uh, forward to that. I saw you can pre order it on their website now. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the idea. So, I mean, that's when I found out that it was an exercise video. <laughs> that's what I, I put, um, you know, I published the um, the, the website link so that people could pre order it. Yeah. And, and uh, oh. also, Staycation is coming out this year, or maybe it is out. Yeah, no, it's not out yet. Um, yeah, that was something done during the pandemic, and um, um, I co-produced it, although I'd never seen a script, which mm -hmm. it's not a good idea to produce <laughs> stuff when you don't know yeah. what it is. I kept saying, I'd love to see a script. I'd love to see a script, and um, I never did. And and so, um, no, I, I'm just, I'm in it again. I'm, I'm going to stop now just like me, me, being the worst Waldo of movies. I really am. <laughs> but for a while I'm just <laughs> um I, I come in and, and I'm a, I'm somebody that um is trying to keep my family together even though they're turning. So mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'd like so, to see that. I, yeah. I, that I, I saw a scare package too, which was really fun. I had the director on the show and uh you were really fun in that. A lot of a uh, lot of effects in scare package too. Yeah. Yes, there were. It was a funny thing. So my idea for her was like to be so put together that, you know, when she's at the end, like she's completely trashed. Right. But the funny <laughs> thing is people don't know me and they can't read my mind. So they'd see me like fussing with my makeup and my hair and all that. And they were I think that they were scared. They're like, is she going to let us mess her up? She really cares about how she looks. Mm. I was like, 
No, the whole point was like trash me, man. And they were like, oh, thank you. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that was the whole idea. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Uh, so it, uh, you didn't really do, do a lot of uh, makeup, I don't think, until, you know, the last, like, you know, a few years. Did you do a lot of effects like on yourself, like until no, the no, because as the final girl, you never had, you, oh, yeah. you know, you didn't have that stuff on you. I never had yeah. stuff on me. Now, you know, I, I had stuff on me in the old ones. I had stuff on me in in scare package too. That's the only two so far, I think. Okay. Where is that? Was it? What's that experience like? Has that been fun to do? Or yeah, because I never knew what it was like before. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. like to get filthy just like as much as the next person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, but like I said, I didn't even look to see what I looked like on on the old ones. I just, uh, I'm probably better off not knowing. <laughs> uh, you no, it looks great. Yeah. You know, I saw it afterwards. Um, you could also say my character doesn't know what she looks like, so why would I know what I look like? That's very true. Yeah, she oh. doesn't have a mirror or anything. You think so. she's alive? Yeah. 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 That's a good point. I like see, that. So you made because, your own excuse. Yeah. 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 That's all we do is justify stuff. <laughs> if you're honest, for some really weird reason, random reason. Okay, when you say that, I want you to walk over there. It's because there's a camera over there. You have no reason as that person to walk over. You got to make stuff up. Uh -huh. So because if if you just walk over there arbitrarily, the audience is going to see that. It's like she just sits and then she just walked away. No, so you have to have it really inside yourself that there's a really life or death reason that I'm doing that. And so we make stuff up all the time in our heads. Just yeah. to make it give us a reason to do what technically we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> yep. We, we uh, make early, well, early on, when you said like you know you see do chopping mall and then like some people that wouldn't give you roles or whatever. What did your uh, family and friends think of you doing a lot of horror movies back uh, early on? Um, nobody really said anything to me. I mean, the only people I really knew in California were other people doing horror movies, mm -hmm. so they had nothing okay. to say about it. Um, and I don't know, we didn't look at it like I'm doing a horror movie now. It, it wasn't the same thing. So it'd be like, you're doing a movie, you're making your rent, you know? Yeah. Um, um, as long as, you know, I wasn't starving to death out here. Nobody really, actually, there wasn't that much interest in what I was doing. It was a show that they knew what it was, like Murder, She Wrote, or Simon and Simon, whatever, you know, guest spot. Oh. Then they knew that, but they didn't know what this stuff was. And there were no, you see, the thing is, it's just like George Clooney was, they go, why did you do the attack of the killer tomatoes? <laughs> because I needed the money. What do you yeah, think? And right. then, he oh, wasn't George Clooney when he did. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And then he did. I mean, why do you think we did it? <laughs> it came up, we liked the people that were doing it. We had a pair of bills. And those in those days, we didn't know what the Internet was. No one was right. ever going to see it. <laughs> That's and now look what happened. Uh, it's a funny this movie grizzly 2 they made it way back i'm not sure what year exactly but they made it i think it was in the 80s it's a follow-up to the uh, grizzly which is a slash movie and the producer she finally finished the movie she tried to for decades and it has george clooney in it which is is very is very fun actually but he gets yeah. killed by a grizzly not to spoil grizzly 2. <laughs> oh now, yeah. now i'm not gonna see it neil after that now that i know <laughs> Yeah, really. <laughs> I want my money back. And uh, 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 producing, uh, you talked about co-producing a movie, mm -hmm. and you produced some stuff. Um, how did that come about for you to like uh, produce films, and how do you choose which ones you would like to get involved on that level? It was like necessity. For the first one I did, it was necessary because it wasn't going to get done if I didn't help, you know. And, and so, um, and and um, my friend knew that. I know if you say you're going to do it, that you're going to do it. And I'm afraid anyone else will will, will flake on me. So please do this. Because once I said I was going to do it, <laughs> and believe me, the first time, every time you produce something, or for me anyway, there's a picture of me sitting there watching everything go to hell in a handbasket. And my face is like, <laughs> is, why does it go? This is the funniest thing ever. And my line producer sitting there, she's got the same look on her face. We're like, and somebody snapped the picture. But that's how you feel. And then you think, I'm never doing that again. Oh, you just, you know, just feel like the last ounce of life has been sucked out of you. I'm never doing that again. And then you do it again, just like having a baby. It's like, 
I haven't done it very often, but that, I mean, that's kind of how I got involved in it. And I thought, this is, this is kind of, I, I really like doing this, you know, I didn't, but I haven't pursued it or anything like that. It's just when it comes up. Yeah. You know, um, and but, I, I don't, I don't think everyone really knows what goes into uh, producing something. Cause sometimes it is someone donated X amount of money and they're called a producer. And uh, oftentimes it's someone who's, really help put the whole project together. And that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, there's uh, exec producers. Those are the people that pay, put the money in. And then producers, producers, there's somebody who like came in and saved the day. And then you got your associate producers who probably just put some money in. Um, and so before you know it, you got a list of producers that's like this long. Oh yeah. But, um, the exec producers are the ones that raise the money. Yeah. Usually, although, you know, it's whatever they say it is. I mean, you could have somebody that put the whole money into there and and doesn't even have a producer credit. They have an actor mm -hmm. credit or something. We'll never know what really happens. Right. It's what whatever they say happened is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Which that did that doesn't help anyone out there really know what producer does. So it, it really depends. Well, it could be yeah, it could be all different things. Honestly, there's a joke about that where you know here's what the director does. What does the best boy do? Oh, what does the gaffer do? Oh, what does the producer do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he stands there. But, you know, uh, well, you know, it's not true that I just sort of fell into it, I guess, because I remember a night of the comic like, asking Wayne and Andy, will you kind of teach me how to produce? I'm really interested in it. And Wayne said, there's nothing to it. He goes, watch this. And he, he goes, see how everyone's squirreling around? And they were because we were going to we were going to um, explode a bunch of stuff in the mall. You see that everybody? He, I go, yeah. And he goes, and he yelled at them like really mean. Like, Get it together, whatever it was he said. <laughs> and then he turned to me and he went, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "That's how you're a producer." He wasn't mad or anything. He was just <laughs> <all these things. laughs> but they all went, yeah. And, 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 and well, I don't know if I'll be that kind of a producer, but you know, <laughs> I have it in my pocket in case I ever need it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> You're I like that very much. Yeah, well, this has been a great time, and we yeah, thank you so much. Show. Yeah, thank your you third appearance on the show. Wow, is it going to be like Saturday Night Live where we get jackets if we show up a certain? <laughs> no, that, I, I like this. Uh, maybe a patch or something. I like this. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, maybe I'll have to do like a caricature for everybody that's been on three times. That would be amazing. I yeah. love it. That would that's be great. I like this idea. We'll get Troy to work here. Troy recently yep. retired, so now we can. Uh, we'll yeah, I got time it. on my hands now, yeah, yeah. so you know. Well, how did you get through this whole interview without telling us a little bit about yourself, right? Oh, just you know, I <laughs> I am the person that just kind of likes to listen to good stories. You know, that's um, that's kind of my thing. On he's the, the show, artist you know? of the show. He did the shirt there. Uh, yeah, he's my oh. older brother. I I don't want to say older brother. He's my brother, uh, and, you know. uh, and uh, he'll talk about. It. Was that? I tried to put Neil on the spot too, but he wasn't having it. I was going to see if could make you guys talk instead of me, but it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe then on the fourth appearance, that'll be the Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, right. this time I'll come prepared. I wasn't thinking we'll about switch it. Switch chairs then. Fourth I'll be ready for you. Switch chairs. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kelly. It's thank great you. to have yeah, you. Yeah, Kelly, so much. Thank, yeah. Yeah. thank you. And every, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and who's going to watch this later and all that stuff. And Please come see me at Fear Fest, and please come see me in New Jersey. Um, Phyllis and I um, in New Jersey the weekend before in May, and um, it's all on my website. And then also because people don't go to your website, um, I also list them on on social media. Everything yeah. that I'm doing is pinned at the top, and yet people will still ask me what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just the way it goes. But yeah. Just the way it goes. Yeah. But I love you guys and thank you for having me. And yeah, um, thank, thank you, you for so doing much. this. And uh we're well, happy to, we'll to let you people again. know uh you know your future uh uh things you're gonna be at and uh well, thank we'll let you. Me... yeah thank you. A lot of things, I mean, especially now because things are so dicey and they disappear on you. I can't say anything about anything until I'm really sure that because yeah. then you just look like an idiot, you know, you're talking about something up and then it never happens, yeah. and then yeah. you know. Um, so I never say anything. Most of the time they ask you not to say anything, but sometimes I just don't say anything because I don't want to look like an Save idiot. Like, it doesn't happen. But slash slasher size, I know happened. 
So that looks, <laughs> that looks very fun. And uh, Chad said good things about you. So uh, what did he say about me, by the way? Uh, he said that he that um yeah he said that he liked having you on set. I think that's actually because if you look at his films, a lot of the, it's a lot of the same people. And I think oh yeah um when he finds someone that he likes to work with, and I think trust is a big thing. Uh, that he likes to, you know, continue using them. Well, for a while, it was like we were a little like a theater troupe almost. It was always the same people. Yeah. yeah. That's noticed... kind of neat, though, when you think about it. I think yeah. so, too. I mean, you can yeah. really see why. And people don't like it because it seems like um, like a, a click or something. But a lot of people just choose to use the same people in, you know, many of their movies. And that's the reason why. And it starts to feel like a theater company. Yeah. Um, and then people will say, well, well, if you know who you can trust and count on and everything. Yeah, you know? no, like, and trust. Those are, that's the yeah. name of the name. No, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's, I mean, especially every every year, it seems like the stakes are higher about making a movie. Like, pretty soon it's going to be, they're going to take you out and set you on fire if it doesn't make money. I mean, it's higher and higher and higher. You know, no wonder people are losing their sense of humor. It's just the pressure is oh, yeah. amazing. So any anytime you can take a question out of something you go for it i do i do myself yeah. it's like am i gonna go for the unknown or you know i know this one will save my ass okay <laughs> yeah. Yeah. save me please save my butt <laughs> yeah now, unfortunately there's it's harder to make money with uh independent horror yeah. movies, or just independent movies in general not just horror movies but um if you look at the sheet and look at the statistics and you look at the the money i don't know how anybody does it I mean, I it's a labor of love. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yep. But hopefully everything will come around again and it'll well, get back I think, on track. I think actually we might, I mean, I have heard it said, and I, I kind of believe this, that we may have seen a restructure of the whole film industry after these strikes and everything, mm -hmm. because it got way too weird and there was too much concentrated power. And it was, um, and now that everything is just sort of, falling away um but you know uh, the movies aren't over it's like you know when oh, talkies yeah. came in everyone said the movies are over <laughs> no, yep. not. the tv came oh the movies are over no they're not <laughs> and i think yep. it would it'd be the same thing i don't know how ai is they just come. evolve but yeah we're, we're just evolving and we have growing yep. pains and, and we're all freaked out because we don't know how how it's going to settle and we probably won't right away and so we're all kind of in the unknown um, for a while, and so it's, um, but we're not done. We're that's not at all. Yep. I, yeah, just, I go, to, I go see movie. I, I like to see movie on the big screen when possible. I go to the movies basically every weekend and see a bunch of stuff, and uh, it's fun to see. You know, I like to see a lot of new stuff, and it's also fun to see stuff like, uh, like I said, Night of the Comets playing thirty-five oh, millimeter. Yeah. That's fun to go see because it's in a different. You're also mm -hmm. horror movies are fun to watch with an audience because you can yeah. interact with the movie. The reaction's exactly. always so yeah. much fun. You don't want to go sit and cry with a bunch of people, but you could go and it sit is. and watch a fun horror movie with a bunch of people. Well, you could cry in the comment too. That's but true. That's just true. for yeah. a minute. Um, yeah. Well, every time I go to a screening, like a, go to a film festival and they'll play it or something like that, or or they have a screening and they invite me to it or something. Um, people. One of the things that the person who's running the theater says: How many people have never seen the movie? And then we look and you know sometimes it's a lot of hands. Yeah, and so somebody is, and then somebody took them to see it. Oh, okay. And sometimes it's no hands; they've all seen it before, so you just <laughs> never know what it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah it's really fun. I mean, one time when Orsky and I went to um, Chopping Mall, and it was here, um, and Comic Con was in San Diego, and we thought nobody's gonna be here. You know, everybody's at, at Comic Con. We walked in; people were hanging over uh, off the <laughs> rafters. We couldn't believe it. We thought, oh, okay, look sharp, you know, because there's a big audience here. But we're not just going to be sitting here talking to ourselves. And we we're amazed. So, and all those people had already seen it. You just oh, never know. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm always interested too when I go see those, uh, the move, the midnight movies or whatever. And a lot of people had never seen a lot of the movies we go see. And I was, but it's cool mm -hmm. because it's a lot of people like in their 20s and stuff who never yeah. really seen this stuff. And, Oh yeah, people who maybe grew up with watching it, so it's it's a mm -hmm. they always find new audiences, which is which is cool. Yeah, you'll but, see those people that come with like you know their their parents and they bring. Yeah, I was gonna say, kids, a lot of people and it's say, always great things. My like dad that. turned me on to this. Yeah, um, somebody somebody will come and they'll ask for they'll buy something or ask for something 
for their dad or for their yeah. mom. Or they'll, they'll say, would you say hi to my mom really fast? <laughs> you know, that, that kind of oh, that's great too. Yeah. yeah. So we got a whole other generation of people. You know, I'll say it's true for me. There's a lot of movies that I should have seen. You know, it's my profession, but you can't see everything. Right, and so there'll right. be something like, like, it's ridiculous that I haven't seen it and I'll have to make an effort to catch it, you know, because it's yeah. not necessarily playing every place or, or readily available. And I think I'm going to be doing that the rest of my life, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's stuff people haven't seen. Yeah, I'm always shocked when it, it's something from like the late 70s or 80s that I haven't seen. And I see mm -hmm. a play. I was like, oh, wow, this is one I'm not actually familiar with. I think yeah. I've seen everything. But that's and always fun. so much fun, yeah. though, when you find things like that. Yeah, yeah or thank goodness I finally seen it. I finally know. I can finally have a conversation about it because I know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's like on, on episode um, three of In Search of Darkness. I didn't know what they were talking about anymore. They were digging up some like really obscure <laughs> thing. <laughs> And I, thought, I don't even know. Boy, am I far behind. I think I said something yeah. about it. It's like I got some watching things to do. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, you can't fake that you've seen something. I mean, you no. can, but you just look stupid. Yeah, but people, probably, especially if it's like hardcore, you know, fans oh, yeah. of, of that, they're going to know like, oh, she hasn't really even seen this movie. Yeah. Me. They'll turn in and go, have you seen this? I mean, they're, they're yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> obvious. It's, but it's, it's really always great to have people like that because then they kind of keep you on point. Because, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like, ah, I think I've seen every version of Frankenstein ever made. Mm -hmm. And then when we'd have Larry Fessenden on and he'd start hitting me with, like, 14 different things that I had never even heard of. And I'm like, yeah. son of a bitch, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. nearly as cool as I thought I was. There's so many people that are just walking encyclopedias, mm. you know, that just blow blow me away. Like, Joe Bob's one of them. But, yeah, Larry, yep. too. Um, yep. Fessenden is amazing. Yeah, we're yeah, I'm glad you like Larry. It's one of our favorite guests. So uh, yeah, Larry's I, like just the best guy. Yeah, when uh when I was in L.A. making the movie actually, and um we went to the uh horror trivia night in Burbank, and I think oh, I yeah. know a lot about horror movies, but not well, compared to those yeah. people. That was. <laughs> no, I haven't even been there. I'm just I'm just not even in consideration. Yeah, mind for blown. I've... Yeah, I was like, it was. I had a good time, but I was like. I was happy when I knew a question. I thought it was all smart, but like <laughs> other teams would know every single thing. And I was like, whoa. Oh, yeah. Man. And it was, was like crazy stuff. Man like, on, you know, it was like the, the kill mummy. count of Robocop 2, and it was like 117 or something. I was like, who the hell would know that? Like off the top of their head. But uh, I don't know. Wow. That's like, <laughs> did they have a boob count too? Or like, <laughs> they did I not at that, that one. Robot yeah. foo. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> But it was fun, but yeah, I and we we my team did not win, but we had a good time. As long as we didn't come in dead last, though, I think we were kind of in the middle because but there were legit like a few and a cup. There was someone they actually did get into an argument over one of the questions. Oh no! It was, which was kind of funny to me, like not in a physical, but they did get kind of heated because they're like, "Well, technically, this doesn't count as a whatever." And I was like, "Oh, it's oh, a kill." It's like you know, he, he only <laughs> lost his leg; he might still. Yeah, have well, I, dead, I, I found it kind of entertaining, <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. Did you see him after? He could be dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Very good point. Yeah. No, I know that they, they get heated about it. Well. You have, I mean, how, how do you know all that stuff about movies? How, how do you yeah, even? That's a good question. So, yeah, they get heated about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> yeah. It was a good time. I'll, I will go one time. I'll probably just sit there and not say anything. Yeah. You, they, they're yeah, they're you set up. In, soak it all in. Yeah. They're yeah. set up in teams. So, uh, I'm sure you probably have a friend who's who goes there regularly. You can, oh, yeah. you can uh, hook up with their team and. I know a couple of people who go and, you know, it's a, it's just like, you know, people get disappointed in you if you don't know stuff that they think you ought to know. <laughs> so my team was fine. Yeah, my team was <laughs> all right. But I'm sure a couple of those teams might be upset, but, but yeah, if they know the probably answers, take it pretty seriously. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, sure. If you know that much about it, it's, it's a, a big, it's, it's your life. It's one of the yep. important things in your life. And it's nothing to joke about. Yeah, they they had cool prizes yeah. and stuff, so it was a good time for people. Uh, oh, that's right, because one time we did win trivia, Neil, and 
we never got our prize. That's true. What Troy happened? and I, we won trivia at a at a little uh, restaurant on uh, in, on Cape Cod, and uh, I don't know. They said everyone was going to win prizes, and we actually did get all the questions right, and they and we'd won nothing. Yeah, we, I, I'm not sure. What we it. had thirty nine cool. out of forty questions right. Yeah. And we didn't win anything. You should well, you should call him on that. <laughs> yeah, if we ever we see him back annoying, there, we will. You yeah. know, yeah, if yeah. I offered to give a prize and I didn't get it didn't deliver, I'd be called on it. Yeah, <laughs> that's very I'm true. Very, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, I it didn't have to, to be anything it. insane. It could, yeah, you know, just something. It could have been a free appetizer. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, some chicken wings or something. I don't yep, know, but yep. you gotta stand up for yourself. Don't ask, don't get. <laughs> what we'll would Kelly Maroney do? The badass exactly. Is, yep. It all comes Had back you around. there for us. Miss my prize. Yep. <laughs> well, I, I was just say pull out the Uzi, but we don't want to say that today. But, you know, we can, yeah, yeah. Next time we'll know. Right. <laughs> right. So, um. So that was, um, yeah. Are you going to send me a link to this? It's yeah, of course. Yeah, and I'll 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 uh, tag you all over the place. I'll be very <laughs> annoying, but yeah, I'll okay. send you a link. And... <laughs> yeah, because people, not everybody can make it when you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the uh, people listen, and honestly, not you know, people listen all over the world, so it's different times everywhere. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And you'll cool. get people that like to listen to the podcast on the way to work. Yeah, the audio or version uh -huh. or the you know. it'll be on video on different platforms and mm -hmm. good. So yeah. Well, I like this new. I mean, last time I was on it was just the phone. Yeah, honestly, we started doing the oh, yeah. video during the pandemic. Uh, someone asked me to. I was on a show and they were using Zoom, and I was like, I don't know what that is. So long story short, I downloaded Zoom, and then they actually only used the audio. And I was like, that's fine, but why did I download this and set up a backup? Yeah. <laughs> and well, so, you need it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so now I have it. So I was like, all right, well, why don't yeah. we just start using it for our show? So. Well, at first, I think we all thought, oh, we don't really have to worry about that because it's, this will be over before you know it. And then, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. like three years into it, we think nothing to jump on Zoom. <laughs> You know, got yeah, all this yeah now it's everything. <laughs> you got a doctor's appointment. You're doing it on Zoom. Yeah, that's yeah. Legit. I legit had yeah. doctor's appointments on Zoom yeah. during the uh, pandemic. Yeah, it's, it's especially um, people, therapists. That's big mm -hmm. because yep. the, the person doesn't have to drive there and you know whatever it is yep. they have to do. They can just turn on their computer. It's easier. It's easier in some cases for them. So I, I think it's. I mean, there's always a silver lining, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. And there's a lot of creativity came out of that time, like. Uh, people thought of different ways to make movies when you couldn't get together, and yeah, a lot of, a lot of fun stuff came out of that. Then, yeah. obviously, terrible things, of course, oh, but, God, yeah, you yeah. know, people find people find ways to uh to continue to put out entertain entertainment even during bad times, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did some radio stuff where, um, that, that was really fun too. Yeah. Um, you know, like yes. the, old house, you know, the shadow knows that kind of stuff, yeah. oh, God, uh, yeah, that's the best. <laughs> Speaking of Larry Fessenden, he does a, a series of that. It's a Beyond the Pale, and they're great. They're so good. All on. Yeah, they're like old so style good. radio plays. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Mine was called Hidden Frequencies. Oh, cool. That, that was one I, I did. And then I, also did the, I also did the um uh, the Bleeders Digest. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, once you're there, they go, oh, can you do the, I forgot this voice. Can you do this voice too? And then oh, no. pretty soon you're like, like I want this to be good so I can be a hero and try to do everybody, or we can find somebody else. <laughs> I don't know if I can like, be this, and then <laughs> you know, it might be kind of. Oh, stupid. so they want yeah. you to be Mel Blank when you come in there and do <laughs> four hundred yeah. voices. Thanks. People yeah, people don't realize it, but oftentimes when you get hired for a voiceover, they'll say we're going to need three voices. Oh, see, I never would have known that. Mm hmm. Yeah, when you, mm -hmm. that's really. I'm gonna look those up. I'm interested. Uh, I, I I even like listening to the old ones sometimes, like because uh, some of the old ones have like Vincent Price and stuff on. Yeah, for a while. so great. Yeah, and then I've liked that they it's become kind of like a a cool thing to do. Um, I think so too. Me. It's scary. Yeah, I did a couple of other ones too, but those are the two that I remembered the names of. Okay, off yeah. offhand, I didn't no. even have intended bringing that up. So. No, that's cool though. I, I that's that sweet little brainstorming things, you know. Yeah, I do that anytime. And part of the fun of doing, or the the cool thing about doing voiceover is 
you don't have to put mascara on or do your hair. But oh, yeah, in this but... case, in this case, we did because we were still on camera, which is oh, more fun okay. because you have to look like you're, you know, yeah, almost like being in person because you dress the character and you have, you know. So it was a little bit like being on television, except for we're all not with each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Annabelle does Annabelle, our our third co-host here, does bring that up sometimes. The video is harder for her because she has to look uh, presentable as opposed mm -hmm. to her audio. And uh, she couldn't be here today, but she does say hello and sorry oh, that she missed. Tell her I said hi. Yeah. yeah, please do. Yeah, you guys have no idea. And you just show up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we I wouldn't be caught dead doing that. I was I did something where I didn't even like do anything, and that was the uh, for the old ones, or, or sorry, the deep ones. And it was, I was like, wait a second, I'm walking on camera. I don't have anything done. Cons yeah. I realized I chose that, you know, I suppose that anything done, right. but it was still weird because women, are, well, I'm so used to like, you know, at least doing a little something, something, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, um, and so we're going to, we're always going to do that. You know, I, I'm sure you're never going to have a woman on your show that's going to show up like, you know. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. Just not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I know you can't see. I'm just wearing my pajama pants and <laughs> I just put a hat on, and you know, I'm good to go. But I understand. Yeah, but it's just the way it is. I, I don't care. I would, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> you know, I don't want to disappoint people either. You know, I mean, oh, exactly. People are going to be watching. You know, like get it together. You know. <laughs> Show up. <laughs> Showing up for you, why don't you show up for them? Is what I think. That's that's a nice way to put it, though, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. yeah. And you look great, by the way. Oh, you thank you. Look great. Yeah. Well, thank awesome. you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So the badass cheerleader, go check out kellymaroney.com. I'll put the link here. See where you're okay. going. And All right. uh, this is great. This was awesome. Yeah, and it was two uh, actually two hours. So I feel I felt that. Oh my gosh. Time. But you seem like you had a good time. So so <laughs> yeah. uh hopefully it wasn't that. I, yeah, I usually say, you know, just shut me up when it's time because I'll just keep talking until you tell me to stop. That's, you that's, know, I've seen that happen a couple of times where I, I could tell that the person was not used to inter having an interview, such you know, and, and I could see them panicking. And that's how I started doing that. I thought, I'm just going to, I'm just going to help this person out here. And, it's like, yeah. blah, 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 blah. and then it just became a habit. Like, I don't even know. I, I mean, you guys are great interviewers, but I don't even wait to see if this person's a good interviewer or not. I right. just don't want them to panic. Yeah. So uh, it, uh, uh, also that 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 reflects on you. So if you're on a show and maybe the person's inexperienced or not great or whatever, and and you're just sitting there, someone else might watch it. They don't know that that person's oh, yeah. background and be like, no. oh, she's not a very good interview. She's just sitting there. Or something. No, you know I, mean? I, know. I know. There's something of me on video though where I'm trying to help. I'm actually the interviewer and I'm trying to help the guy I'm interviewing out. It is the funniest thing you ever. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you're interviewing somebody and they're, and they're tanking, you can't yeah. help them. <laughs> oh. I mean, the, the editor and I were rolling on the floor, yeah. not able to breathe. It was so funny. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it, it's a, there's a thing. Um, who does it? Um, I think it's, um, um, um. Anyway, the, the, a little kid comes up and is interviewing this actress, and they're really nervous. And she's and and she the way she talks to her is great. This is going to be the best interview ever. You know why? Because we're going to make it the best interview ever. Oh, and she just put this kid so at ease, and you know, I didn't see the rest of it, but I'm sure it was great. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. That's very nice. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you know John Dugan at all? It's a weird question, but hey, he's he okay. he probably does a lot of conventions. He played the grandpa in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But um, the only reason I brought it up is what time on the show? I've known him for years. We've known him for years. And he told this big, long story. It was like really went on and on saying the first time I met Neil, he was all nervous. And I told him to go um, get this stuff together and prepare, come back, we'll do this interview. And I let him tell the whole story. And then I was like, and then he finished. I was like, that never happened. And he was like, oh, yeah, it was someone else. <laughs> it wasn't me. 
That's a great story, story, though. It was, yeah, you know, he went on and on. And I was like, just thinking, who is he talking about? This this never happened, <laughs> but okay. Sometimes people will come up and say, I met you at that party. This was a little, I said, that wasn't me. <laughs> and I don't know if people just go, yeah, to pretend it's me, you know, just to be funny or something or what. But they have this like crystal clear memory of it, and I wasn't there. So wow. God only knows what people are out there thinking. <laughs> I met her. She was this, this, and this, and this, and it wasn't you. Anyway, the that's Kelly, the, the Kelly doppelganger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, are you working on anything uh, currently? That's not something I can tell you about right, because sure if it enough. doesn't happen, I'll look like an idiot. I, I, I totally get you. Yeah. But no, I'm not on set shooting anything at the moment. Right. No, I have, I have things that hopefully will happen. And will you ever go the Brink Stevens? You saw her directing. Would you ever like to direct something? Ooh. You know, no, I don't. I mean, no. I've directed. I actually had accidentally directed a play one time, and I really did like that. I thought, gosh, you know, you do after being in, around so long, you do kind of learn a thing or two. You really do. But the camera and everything, I don't know, understand that. And you have to understand that stuff. Yeah. Otherwise, you're leaving the DP. I mean, you know, if you don't know what, what they're doing, then how can you how can you help them, you know, or give them what they need? I'm sure they'll just, I, I would probably just say, just tell me what you need and take it because I don't know what you need. I don't, I, I don't know. Probably not. Right. Probably Fair not. Yeah. Well, it's too yeah. much pressure. Yeah, no, it's I interesting. That. You think uh, producing maybe would have more pressure, but directing is a different thing. It's more I would, like no. I think directing yeah. is more pressure. I mean, I don't know because I've never directed, but right. yeah. Catherine Mary Stewart would like to be a director, and she has directed some stuff. So, some I mean, some people do, you know, but um, I don't think so. Just because of, the, of all the techn technical stuff. Yeah, all right. Well, that makes sense. I don't want to. I don't ever want to show up not knowing what I'm doing. If I can, I mean, yeah. I, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to be wrong, but to just show up and not understand anything, I'm not going to do that to myself yeah. <laughs> or anybody else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, the uh, you know, like you said, anyone else too, because everyone else would be looking for you to you know, yeah. to be doing it, and if you're not yeah. prepared or. I mean, if you if not, you, not prepared, but not knowledgeable on the technical side, you know, you're kind of the captain of the ship, and yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, we all kind of are on a set in our own ways, captain of the ship. And if you look like if you look like you don't know what's happening, you panic everybody. I mean, half the oh, thing yeah. being an actor is make people feel okay, make people feel safe and not scared. Because um, um Joe Montaigne said something to me one time, um, and I already knew it, but the way he said it was great. He goes, um, um, you see how everybody's kind of like happy and stuff here. I, and I go, yeah. And he goes, that's because you and I show up and I don't know how you're feeling, but we show up happy and everybody's taking their cue from the two leads. And if we showed up and we were complaining about stuff and we were miserable, that would go all the way around this and everybody would be doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's true that no matter where we are, our energy is affecting other people. Yeah. You know, and, and people want to feel like, okay, they know what they're doing. They're not going to let me fall, they're, you know. And so I don't know, maybe if I shadowed somebody for like five or 10 movies, I'd feel better about it. But as it is like today, yeah. like if she said, let's go direct this, I'd say, mm. I can maybe <laughs> talk to the actors, make sure they find their lights, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, yeah. So I also saw on uh, social media, you have the action figure from Night of the Comet of yourself. Is that your first time being an action figure? No, I have several, several um, Samanthas and I have a, an Allison and then of course I have the, the Kelbots. For some reason, we don't have Funkos. Catherine and I do not have Funkos mm -hmm. and we must be the only people in, in this industry that don't have them. Yeah. I think it might be because my uniform is kind of hard to make. But oh, I don't, that, I don't that's know. actually interesting, yeah. I don't know if that's true or not, but it just seems like a weird thing. But people will send, they'll, they'll make them and they'll send them and um, um, or they'll give, give you one, but it's so expensive for them to make. It's like, yeah. if there's $80. For an independent person to make them, that's why yeah. uh, for people who buy them from like independent people, whatever, there's so much more money because it's right. not a giant company that can mass produce. Yeah, know. it's not Mattel. That, that'd be yeah. one thing. But so 
actually what ends up happening is if somebody buys one, I don't know what they run for. They're like $80, $120, who knows? But they're up there, they're expensive. Yeah. I couldn't like keep them in stock. Yeah. I couldn't afford to, but I signed them. <laughs> yeah. I'll sign them. If, if, but that's too bad. And I, I wish that we did have something like that. But as of now, I've not figured out how to do that. Yeah, I was just I'm not giving with, up with three D printing. Maybe in the future, it'll be more affordable for someone to actually make you know some of them. So I, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, you mean? people, you know, could make one and then uh, make a mold in three D. I don't know. I'm just saying maybe in. The I don't. Future. I don't really know. There's yeah. things I don't know enough do. about it either. So I don't. Yeah, there's things we can do now in AI that I think um, might actually work to our advantage once we figure out what's going on with it. Well, like, I think I think it would be great if I AI I AI'd myself back to being, you know, that age in that outfit. I think people would like to see that. Yeah. I don't know how to do it, but uh -huh. so thinking, uh, that's interesting though, because you see mostly very negative reactions to AI, but you're uh, you so you don't have all negative thoughts on I do. On I I I really <laughs> do. I'm just trying to make I'm trying to figure out. You're not going to stop it. It's going to continue. So you might as well like, at least find find a, a a positive about it. Exactly. Let's figure out what what can work with this, and instead of because you know by the time that we even knew it was happening, the horse had already left the barn, and that's mm -hmm. always the case. By the time we know what's going on, they've been doing it for years, and we just now found out because they're going to. Yeah, you know, I mean, I a lot of friends who did like background work and. And they were scanning them for years with, mm -hmm. they didn't really know why. And then now it comes out, you know, they did that. So then they could just use scans of people without them actually being on set and not have to pay yep. them. And yep. It was um, crazy. The movie with Susan Sarandon and um, and Tim Robbins with the, the baseball thing. Uh, was uh, the first yeah. Time what you mean. Used the CGI audience in the stands. It was the first time. Hmm. And that was I mean, how many years That's ago? That's a long that? time ago. Yeah, like Bull Durham, I think. Bull Durham, yes. Yeah. I my understanding, I I don't know that for sure, but my understanding is that was the first time that they did it. It looked great. So yeah. like we're doing it again. Now, when we were in, during the strike, central casting, which is a real place, by the way, um, they cast extras, extras and stuff. They were calling people in and saying, "Hey, you know, uh, for a hundred dollars, you can go in, make a hundred dollars, and they're just going to scan you." I thought. Those bastards. Yeah. <laughs> no way. And they're doing the same thing about voiceovers. They had some guy going, um, non-union guy going, um, um, I made so much money having them AI my voice. And like he had, you know, I thought, oh please. Yeah, it's really short sighted. Yeah, you made some money here, but then uh, you'll never make any money, you know, in the future. Well, because voiceover, one of the things with voiceover is everybody will tell you hey get into voiceover it's not easy to get it you know but so they feel like i got into voiceover i and they all they did was ai their voice yeah and i've Ooh. just seen some of that like just online and it's it's obviously needs a little bit of work but like it's pretty accurate the, what they could do with that and obviously it's just going to keep getting better and better like any any technology It'll be if it's if it's a little shaky right now. In a year, it'll be. That's you how fast they can. Learn. I remember when the AI, like the sites you could use to make AI art, when they first started, they all had the six fingers, and people kind of joke. And and not even like a year, they've improved so much. Mm -hmm. And you know, in a few years, if I honestly, you probably won't even know if something is AI or not. Well, all we can hope is that the human heart can recognize a human being from an AI person. Yeah. I, I even know uh, on YouTube, they just started this a couple weeks ago. You have to, they ask you if, it's basically, they word it weird, but it's basically asking you if you're using AI. Oh, yeah, you have video. to say, you have to yeah. say if it's AI. Yeah. The same thing with the newspapers or, or anything that you read online. If, if it's been um, chat GPS or G, mm -hmm. GPT on it. GPS, <laughs> GPT, um, you have to say that it was. Yeah, that was really, actually, last time I was in LA, um, late, late last year, and a friend of mine did a chat, GBT, and they did my bio, and they just did it on their phone, and I watched it, mm -hmm. and it was about 20 seconds, they wrote the whole thing, 
And I read it and it was very accurate. It had like two things you'd have to correct. It said like, mm -hmm. I watched, I grew up being a horror movie fan because of my single dad. And it's really my single mom. Mm. So, I mean, you could just do that and then go and make the corrections easily. But I was, it was very strange. And I'm like, I don't even know where they pull that from. Like, well, like the thing is, there's the a lot of, give me, give me this. There's a lot of misinformation on the internet, and ChatGBT is just going to I'll keep saying it. Yeah. I have a personal one. It's a kind of a pet peeve. It is not um, teenage comet, like teenage mutant comet zombies. There was no such thing as mutants when we did that. That's uh -huh. mutant ninja turtles. Yeah. It's teenage comet zombies. Somebody put on the internet that it was, you know, e easy enough. Some kid or something wrote something. Teenage mutant comet zombies. Do you think I can get anybody to stop saying that? No. Yeah. No. I have to say it. It's teenage comet zombies. I was there. I saw the script. Oh no, it wasn't. It's teenage mutant. I I was I was there. <laughs> they argue with me about it. You know, you really have to pick your battles sometimes. But that's my point. Is that misinformation will just get repeated and repeated. That happens all the time because somebody will say, why don't you write something about Night of the Comet? They go on the internet and find stuff that isn't true. Yeah. You know, but nobody bothered to correct. And then you see it again. And, you know, if, if somebody says something to you three times, it's true. So. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that. You know, and I mentioned uh, Sid being our first guest on the show, Sid Haig, and uh, my co our co-host at the time, John, is on the show anymore. He mentioned something he read on IMDb and said was, he's like, never trust IMDb. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, people have a lot of credits on there that of stuff that ne either someone was trying to make and it just never happened or mm -hmm. whatever. So you can't just go in there and start asking someone about something in their IMDb if, yeah. if it never yeah. exists. It doesn't exist. <laughs> I actually have some credits of stuff that's never happened. So Yeah, they had this whole thing. Of, I don't know if it's the same way now, but there was a point when if it said so on the IMDb, <laughs> it was true. Well, nobody's infallible. Yeah, right. And people were just saying, no, it's infallible. I'm like, really? <laughs> you really think that? Because think about all the people they're writing about. You really think everything they say is infallible? So I, I don't, I think there's been enough coming out that, you know, it, it's just humans. You know, ChatGPT is not human, though, and it'll just keep repeating stuff that isn't right. true. But it's getting their information from humans mm -hmm. who may have put out, you know, not um, necessarily fake stuff, but stuff that's just not correct. Inc yeah. Incorrect, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying, yeah. yeah. Because I, I'm, a friend of mine who's a, a writer um, went on, his because he, he he's a writer, but he's screenplay and stuff like that, but he's also written a few books. And he looked at his list of books, and there's one on he doesn't recognize and somebody had put out a GPT autobiography of him and sold it under his name. I don't know how long it was on there before yeah. he found it. Yeah, that's just crazy. Without his permission. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was two years ago, two, three years ago. So guess what they can do now by then? Yeah. By now. Yeah. It's, uh... so you, yeah, we had to keep a positive attitude about it. <laughs> yeah. Figured out. Well, yeah. I do agree. Like, there's no way you're going to stop it. Once something starts, like it's it's only yeah. gonna keep. But there's ways you could, uh, you know, use it um, as a tool for something good, and and you mm, know, we'll figure it out. Yeah, hopefully, it well. or it could take over the world like Terminator. So we'll find yeah. out. Yeah, or yeah, or killbots. I mean, it's kind, <laughs> of, it's kind of funny how topical that thing became. Oh yeah. And, well, just another thing, everybody and everybody who has an idea for. Um, Chopping Mall Part Two thinks that they're the only person that's ever thought of it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm uh, not kidding. I have an idea for Chopping Mall Two, and <laughs> you don't say really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I love that because it's they're taking it so personally, you know. Yeah. Uh, Why well, I, I mentioned any of the comment has has uh, not just someone coming up to you like I have an idea. Was there ever actually? someone what did it ever get anywhere where there maybe there would be a sequel to uh chopping Mall? um no not that i know of not that i know of what always happens is somebody will write a script and then they won't like it right or you know or it'll fall apart somehow yeah um i i just say it's cursed you know yeah <laughs> it's so just... plus it, it's 
Uh, I mean, malls still exist, but uh, they're not nearly a lot of them. Unfortunately, you're not like where I live have closed because they're just not that yeah, popular. Yeah, I know. We got to figure out something to do with those abandoned malls because that's an opportunity that we're missing. You yeah, know, uh, not to something. get real. We were in Worcester recently for uh, for a festival, and um, there was so much abandoned places, which is really it was just it was kind of depressing, like mm. restaurants and a yeah. lot of factories that were abandoned for a long time. It seems. Yeah, just, I mean, somebody was saying that they should um, make them um, um, senior homes because it would be great. They're back in the eighties, you know. This is where they wanted yeah. to be in the first place. You know, they could live there. And then I like that. Yeah, kind of they're back at it, the mall. Yeah, it kind of lends itself to. I can see where they could recreate that. It's kind of like in a circle, and you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll All figure right. it out. Yeah. <laughs> even even where I live, not far from me, is a a, a a elementary school, and it's been abandoned now. Not abandoned. I mean, they they don't. It's it's kept up, but there's nothing in it for years. And uh, they always try to vote to make it a senior home, to make it affordable mm -hmm. housing, all these different things, and it always gets voted down. And it just sits there, this giant school with uh, everyone they keep down, it lit up for some reason, and yeah. No, no, let's keep it creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of creepy, honestly. I know. <laughs> How many abandoned? I mean, that's that's a stock. Yeah, we open on an abandoned house. It's you know, I mean, that's one of our main um, uh, tropes. Yeah, now I think maybe I should I should take advantage of that while it's still there. Abandoned. You should. Don't and you know, <laughs> yeah, you'd have to. You'd have to. I don't know. Who, if you'd even find who owned it, so perhaps you wouldn't even have to know. I mean, have to like True. deal with them. Oh, it was abandoned. I just started shooting. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Play stupid. He's, yeah, he's here to, to, to apologize after. And then all, that all, the time. all the time. <laughs> Words That's a life life lesson. That's a life lesson. Yes. It's easier to add, beg forgiveness than to ask permission. It's better. All right. <laughs> I'll, I will keep that in mind. Yes. Like it's what Kelly Maroney told me. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I won't bring up your name. Okay, good. Good. I, <laughs> all right. Well, I will let you go now. Okay. And I had a great time. I did too. Yeah. And I'm glad too. you I'm glad you're not mad that you're here longer than, than we said you'd be here. So. No, uh uh I do, I do have to get going because I there are a couple of things I was supposed to be doing, but it's okay. Nothing is nothing bad is happening. So all it's right. fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Good, good. I don't want to be blamed for that. So. No, no, no. Yeah. All no. right. And we'll talk soon. Okay. And I'll I'll, I'll keep in touch about this uh, mall uh, documentary. Yes, and you know, um, yeah, the mall. You know what? That's a great idea. I think it's a good idea. I do too. I do all too. Right. <laughs> all right. See you later. See ya. Bye. I think I go like this, right? I'll take you out. I feel bad. Oh, she knew how to do it. Boom. She knew how to do it. All right. I think Troy's gone here, too. Um, he might have had computer issues. I had a great time with Kelly. Um, I felt bad because she uh, wanted about like an hour, but she's having a good time, so so I shouldn't feel bad. I have a lot of similarities there. I know what it's like to overthink things and be like, is, is this person going to be mad at me? Thinking... I took advantage of him and made him uh, stay on here. But whatever. But no, she had a she had a great time. I had a great time. Uh, Night of the Comet is a great movie. Not just because Kelly was on here. I always loved the movie. I always loved Chopping Mall. They're very different movies. Chopping Mall is much more uh, exploitation horror, which I like. Uh, Night of the Comet is much more uh, as she talked about. You know, it's. It's the sisters, so they're it's you know they're bonding. It's more emotional movie, but both are great uh, films, and I watched it many times uh, back in the day, and I still like to watch them. I actually have Chopping Mall around here somewhere on DVD, but I have a bunch of stuff here if you haven't noticed, so I'm not sure where it is. Um, it's not there, but we'll find it. All right. I don't have the Blu-ray, though. I don't believe. All right. So I'm going to get out of here next week. We'll be back here Thursday with some folks. Who's on? I don't remember. Oh, I know. 
Naomi Grossman is returning uh, next Thursday, a week from tonight, from American Horror Story. But we're going to be talking uh, mostly about American Horror Story because Annabelle and I went to see her one-woman show uh, a couple months ago, or maybe last month. And uh, she's returning, and we're going to talk about that in depth and some qu follow-up questions. So uh, that'll be very cool. And I believe we've got some other guests. There's a lot of guests coming up. So go and join the group, Facebook dot com slash groups slash without your head horror uh you can find out who's coming up on the show and all the different events please hit the like button on youtube so wherever you're watching this go over to uh youtube at some point in time and uh subscribe like comment see some comments share it out to the world it will uh be it'll mean a lot to me because it's cool if you're watching on facebook i think it's uh, even streaming on x but um a primary location is youtube and unfortunately there are ads on there and they help out the show so subscribe to us on there and there's not just uh, the live shows on there. there's dinner and a movie with annabelle and i where we go out and review movies uh in boston there's also uh a lot of video reviews with justin b head justin beheading uh todd quality Yeager, and diablo joe so you can check out all those uh coming up in a few weeks will be severed limbs 14 so if you have a short film and you would like to submit that or a trailer uh you can do that on film freeway that'll help us out if you'd ever want to help out the show uh you can send in super chats or you can venmo heady verse or you can paypal without your head at gmail.com to help cover the cost here uh let's see here i've got a few little things i'm i don't know why but i brought basket case a lot of times and Basket Case, oddly enough, is uh, on Arrow streaming this month for April. So check that out. Also, Meet Friend by uh, Izzy Lee, former guest on the show. It's a short film. First open, uh, first Omen is opening this weekend. I'm going to go see that soon. Immaculate still playing. Uh, Immaculate, I thought would be uh, elevated horror. And I hate that term, by the way. But it's much more uh, of an ex- exploitation horror than i ever imagined and uh, anvil and i will give us uh give you guys a uh a deeper review of that and we also have a q a with mike i forget the name of the director mike mohan maybe uh i should know this but uh we, we have a q a with the director from coolidge i'll be posting that soon uh the first uh trailer is out from bambi the reckoning which I think is is pretty wild. So uh, go and check that out. All right. Um, if anyone would like to video in real quick, you can. But I'm going to be taking off here. I mentioned this on Facebook. I'm sorry. But uh, we had the two and a half inter hour interview. That was really cool. Really good time. Uh, coming up, I'm going to be playing uh, music of Lumaya Dark for a music of the month. So, yeah. Uh, coming up soon, Annabelle will return to the show. Let's see here. Great show, Neil. That's from Jack Russell. Arbor Day, the cast is coming together. I actually have a test screen, a test film. First thing shot for Arbor Day. Arbor Day is going to be the first without your head short film. Some people are pushing me to make it into a feature film. I don't know, but we're going to do uh, probably a short film. And uh, the cast is coming together. Uh, some of the practical effects are coming together. We're going to put, we're going to launch a uh, crowdfunder soon. So if people would like to help make this a reality, because it does, you know, cost some stuff. I'd also like to feed the cast. So that'll be a good time. Uh, Coast might jump on here, so that'd be fun. Uh, let's see. I'm a huge fan of corporate horror and suspense. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe like, uh, I don't know what corporate horror means. So let me know what that means. I'm not sure. Uh, Coast. Um, well, of Coast, if you can't come on tonight, you can come on another night. Join me. That'll be fun. But Arbor Day is coming up. Me, Annabelle Lecter, Troy Jones. Andrew Savory, Todd Yeager, some other folks are involved. 
written by Nast, written by me, going to be directed by me, starring me. It's freaking egomaniac over here. But no, we're all going to be in it. It'll be a good time. Troy's doing a lot of the practical effects. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully you can get some art by Annabelle in it. I have some ideas, so I can't talk too much about it. But it's Arbor Day. It's about uh, it's a horror movie about trees. What's not to love? So when Annabelle and I first uh, started talking before we even met, before she came, became part of the show, we were talking about making movies together. That never happened. But now, why not? Time just keeps going by. So let's uh, let's start making some fun stuff is, is what I say. Coast! Coast LPA! How's it going, my buddy, my pal, my amigo, my compadre? Hey, how you doing, man? How's it going? Good. Good. Yeah. I, I finally got a shirt on. Hell yeah, he's not showing up naked. Yeah, I know. I'm too tired of the nakedness. Oh, I'm going to take mine off. No. So yeah, you're looking hey, good. Do what you like, like Humpty Dumpty said, right? <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Yeah. <laughs> so, so no Annabelle? No Annabelle tonight? Uh, no, she's had, she posts about this on her Facebook. She's uh, having uh, a stressful time at work and some stuff going on. But she'll be returning to the show uh, hopefully next week. Oh, okay. Okay. That's understandable. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, horror. Horror. Okay. Um. Ever seen that movie, uh, *Malignant*? Yes, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan, honestly. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's it's a big hit in my movie club because we we have a movie club also. It's mostly oh. anime. Yeah, but um. So, uh, yeah. so Annabelle and I, uh, we did dinner in the movie from 2012, I think, up to 2019 or something. Then we took a couple year break, and when mm -hmm. we came back with dinner in the movie. I believe it was the first episode was malignant. Oh uh, yes. Episode. And yeah. uh, I I really like that movie because it's really it's a much crazier movie than I think because it's made by a mainstream director and I like that he really made like a crazy movie kind of felt like an 80s horror movie that yeah. I would have watched, you know, in the 80s like just a cra real crazy premise. Not necessarily believable, but it's but it's played straight, and mm -hmm. uh, but yet it's it, it played at theaters with like a wide audience, and I remember watching it with like you know normal. They're probably thinking they're going to see the next Conjuring, and they're walking watching this really uh, crazy horror movie, and I, I love that about it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it was it was pretty cool, like um. Because Stephen King actually called it like the uh, the move, like one of his favorite movies. The uh, malignant, yeah. It's like I, I don't know the exact article. I have to pull it up, but yeah, he said it was like one of his favorites. It's been, yeah, I agree. It was pretty good, especially the scene where she she threw the chair. Well, spoiler alert, people who haven't seen it, but I can't imagine who hasn't seen it by now. Yeah, but but she threw oh. the chair <laughs> and it hit yeah. two the, both the people. It was yes. kind of amusing. Yeah, the once I think really once they're in the uh, the police station, it really yeah. goes all out crazy. There's head stomping and it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and that actress, like uh, man, she she works hard and a lot. Like uh, the the one that was the, um, the 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 character, the younger version of the character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, during that time she was fil filming *Handmaid's Tale* and um, sh and she was doing *Ghostbusters*, the the new renditions of it. Like, yeah, well, yeah, Hollywood works those little yeah. ones hard. Yeah, that's a. Uh, I I'm, I don't know if people know, but I, I'm a big fan of uh, *Handmaid's Tale*. Uh, the new season is coming out. Um, season six, and I think it's the last season. It's season no season five. Yeah. I think. It's going to be the last season and the one that's coming up. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. The book is great. I read the book after I started watching the show. Um, mm -hmm. And what's cool about it is uh, the the author of the book, 
she's she has a small part in in the first season. This almost like a cameo, yeah. and mm -hmm. she also is a consultant on the show. I think to keep it you know in line with like the, her vision of the book. So it, the first season, yeah. people don't know, really follows the book pretty faithfully, and then after, but that's where the book ends. So everything after that, you know, is an expansion from the book. But uh, it really feels like the same, you know, story in the same world. Yeah, it's I don't know because if you follow the book, it continues on with like her children. Uh, uh, yeah, there's, Fred, there, there, there is a sequel book, which I don't think is as good. Honestly, I hate to say that, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's interesting. It's like I mean, but I don't really. It's a little uncomfortable for me because me, me personally, I don't like. Yeah, Annabelle won't watch it because she yeah. it's very uh, hard for her to watch a story about that. Yeah, I don't like seeing female abuse, even if it's like uh, fictitious. I'm not, I'm not a big, big fan of, of that at all. It's, you know, it's not my thing. But yeah, yeah, she can't. It, also, what's weird is. I mean, it takes place in Boston. People don't know, and there's a lot of things like mm -hmm. stuff like uh, they're taking the they show the red line to Ale Wife, and that's that's something you know that Annabelle and I take a lot. Uh, oh, it's it's it's. I told her that she didn't know that, but I told her and she's like she just can't watch it. And then yeah, there were, I remember some. I was listening to the audio book, and it um at the time I was listening to the audio book. They get to a part in the audiobook where they're hanging all the um, surgeons mm -hmm. who, who, were, who had performed, you know, abortions back in the day. And while yeah. I was listening to that, it was the same day that they had uh, 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 voted to to, uh, to get rid of uh, Roe versus Wade. So I was just like, yeah. wow, this is like really. It's both, even though it's <laughs> you know, this was written a long time ago, but. Mm -hmm. This is topical to a lot of stuff that's going on today. Is very self fulfilling weird. prophecy. I, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. A lot of people do that. It's also the same. You know, it's kind of the same thing where it says the Simpsons predict the future, and also um, the Idiocracy is a documentary rather than yeah. a fiction yeah. comedy yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A lot of stuff from that's really like if you watch it now, it's mm -hmm. like oh wow, they predict a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's but Handmaid's Tale. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. uh, the the sci-fi. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but you know, it, it's coming. You know, they're bringing it home. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah, at least yeah. she's in Canada right now. You know, yeah. she's in Canada. She's not going back to Gilead. Those first couple of seasons where where she would turn around and go back to Gilead. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. why are you going to back yeah. to Gilead? Yeah, so, so <laughs> hard to watch. It's like, come on. <laughs> Like, yeah, I like it is a very emotional show to even get into, and you're just like, oh my god! I binge yeah. watched. I didn't watch it when it first started. I watched it, and then mm -hmm. I watched it up until the last season. Then I watched the last season, the previous season. I watched it while it was happening, so I'd watch yeah. it every week as opposed to binge watching it. Which yeah. honestly, there it is cool to be able to binge watch stuff, but I do think you. uh I think there's something about watching the episode every week. I think you like pay attention more and I think you kind of, uh, you have a different like um, appreciation of a show when you're watching it week to week, as opposed to like, I'm just going to watch the whole thing all at once. Now you and I, as, as late stage Gen Xers can agree right. with that. Yeah. H however, like Gen Z and beyond, they're just gonna have to start dropping these shows in like lump sums, like they do on Netflix oh, yeah. with, or Amazon, because the, the the declining attention spans in society yeah. as it develops, they're, they're just gonna decrease and decrease until like oh a week for an episode. I can't deal with that. I'm done with the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, yeah, it is, I agree. Uh, a lot, it's yeah. a little different, but uh, the, I was I was doing this movie which never came out, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, bad art cops and i was the oldest person in the group i played yeah that. and uh so i was talking to this one younger guy he's probably like 20 honestly mm -hmm. and he was saying he also does a podcast yeah and he yeah. talked about editing down the whole the whole episode to 40 because at, at the time i think it was a 45 second limit on uh yeah 
and and i was just dumbfounded and i was like some of mine are four hours and he was equally dumbfounded and, uh, <laughs> yeah, so went, that <laughs> go ahead so i went and watched some of them and it wasn't even cut down to like sentences mm -hmm. it was cut down to like sound bites like so yeah. you could tell it was like a group of people talking but it was cut mm -hmm. down to like just like the punchline of like of con I was like I don't understand this <laughs> like <laughs> I get like I could see if it was like a highlight this is like a highlight now go watch the whole show but this was the whole show and I was yeah like, I, just, I just don't understand but they want to get they got to get it in short form now like short form entertainment that yeah. like I mean I'd like to be a little more optimistic about like progressing society and stuff but uh, yeah i think it's the attention span is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter but I, yeah. it's weird because like part of me is like oh, i should do these shorter but then i think well the biggest podcasts in the world are like joe rogan and stuff and those are all long form mm -hmm. interviews that are hours long so i kind of think you have to and i've looked into this and they call it cutting the chicken you kind of mm -hmm. which i should do more of is just so you have the long form interview and mm -hmm. then you should cut it into into smaller pieces and then cut it even to smaller pieces under one minute and then you mm -hmm. can spread them out through platforms so people will be like i watch a one minute short on youtube or a reel mm -hmm. or tiktok and then i'll yeah. go watch the longer cut and then maybe i'll go watch the whole show so. oh that that's that's good actually i think i'm going to take take that if you don't mind, if I can no, borrow no, yeah. that, uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't invent it. I just that that's what I read. That it's what you really what you should do with long form like podcasts. So. Yeah, because my retention, like my retention rates, because I look at my analytics and stuff on my social media, my TikToks and and stuff, and that's how I got out of the whole long form stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm not keeping people like 10, 15, 20 seconds. They're out of there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I gotta get, I gotta get all my ish in, as they say in wrestling. I gotta get all my ish in <laughs> in twenty seconds or less. <laughs> so it's 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 really working. It's allowing me to kind of like shorten my stuff and like uh, be a little more succinct with, with my presentation and stuff. You know, so yeah. it's helped me. What yeah. kind of what do you talk? Actually, I'm not familiar with your podcast. I'm sorry about that. Uh, or you're, you're uh, I, I, I'm, I'm more of a jack of all trades. I just get on my treadmill and, and just ramble and, and do make a bunch of asinine conversations and observations like <laughs> uh, like a Seinfeld meets a Randall Graves meet, meets uh, a Chris Rock. <laughs> you know, so you put those three amalgamations together, and you got pretty much so uh, what what I do. Um, yeah, I should do online. more of the like the the cut because like I don't even really have a lot of followers on TikTok because I don't really I never promote it, which I, I know I should and stuff. But um, but I'm just gonna pull it up like it's got uh actually more than I thought, but still not a lot. Four hundred follow, four hundred sixty three followers. But I'll post Ooh. like clips of um an interview and it gets like 1100 views and one has like oh. 10,000 and it's like, so I really should, I really, I really should do this more often. This Millie yeah. has 5,000 views. And, and like I said, with only 400 followers, it seems good. So. Well, you know, you know what you have that, that sets you apart from probably like everyone else out, out here that's like starting out. Well, you're not starting out. You've been around for a while. But you have you have a strong, a strong like homegrown following audience, you know, like yeah. a very loyal. The, those guys on like on Wednesday and Thursday, you know, or Tuesday and Thursday, like that that's a strong following, and you know they've been with you for years. You know yeah. they come in and out, but you know so you have guaranteed numbers every every week. So that's good. That's going for you. A lot of people can't. Can't see the tech grab, yeah, not like grab, the, but I'll always been up. the idea of building a community has always been important on, on both shows. And, yeah, and, and yeah. that too on on the horror shows. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty good, man. I mean, you you got a good thing here. I mean, and and, and you know, you stood the test of time. You know, I mean, I've always this show. Many other shows kind of got me through some hard, hard times. You know, I was able to laugh through 
those hard times listening to to your well, I product. I, you know, and it's both. It's nice to hear, but it's also fortunate because I don't want to hear people go through bad times. But I've heard that, and that yeah. that really means a lot to me because we're. I mean, even just the shows themselves have gotten me through a lot of stuff. Like, you know, there'd be times mm -hmm. where you get depressed, and but it's like, oh well, Tuesday night I can go and talk to a bunch of crazy wrestling fans. Thursday <laughs> we can go and uh, we're gonna have so and so on the show and talk about movies and. Uh, I it know it's yeah. always gonna be something to you know look forward to, and uh, not mm -hmm. just to show themselves. Like that's cool to obviously talk to whoever, but uh, the um, the community part, all the all the different. Uh, the, uh, some of them are crazy, and that's yeah. not an insult. But there's uh, <laughs> oh, I do. Nice the, yeah, the but, idiots, but, punks, perverts, and fools, as Terry Funk uh, called them. Yeah, I, I love them. I love them. You know, they always they're always been entertaining, and you know that's why I said I wanted to thank you. For all those years of of entertainment, man, you know, consistent, you know, consistent entertainment, consistently funny, you know, you get you get the basically you you're you're buying what you're getting or you're getting what you're buying, you know, and that's that that good funny yeah, entertainment. And, uh, so uh, for people who don't know the the wrestling shows on Tuesday, Nikhil uh, Nikhil Callahan who sends in a lot of questions. He just flew over to. Uh, to go to WrestleMania in Philadelphia, and he just oh. met up with another Hediverse uh, icon, uh, legend, Lexar, and they took pictures together. But it's cool to me that like people, <laughs> like Lexar and Nikhil, would probably never know each other, but they know each other. One guy's in England, one guy's in New Jersey, and they mm -hmm. became friends through the wrestling podcast, and now they've met up. So that's really cool to me. Yeah, especially those meetups and stuff. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, I met Nikhil and yeah. Dobbs together when I was in England, so that was fun. Yeah, that's right. You did go to yeah. You went to England also. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. but your funniest, your funniest ones are the um, I mean, you guys went to travel and the catch up, the catch up story and stuff. You know, catch uh -huh. that's oh, those are funny, man. Yeah, <laughs> those those are always like a child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Intro. Yeah, Intro's a good guy. So yeah, and uh, yeah, and Ambles, I've been going to a lot of festivals. That's been fun. And mm -hmm. uh, so I finally uh, invested in a better microphone because uh, the live live streaming out and about is new for me. So uh, the it was not working. The audio has been really not good. But uh, the new uh, on the show, I can you know I have a pretty nice microphone. But the uh, so anyway, long story short, I invested in a better microphone for live streaming when I'm out in like around people. Cause sometimes the audio can really be drowned out by all the stuff going on, but the new audio does, uh, <laughs> has, is a lot better. So you, you need a producer, man. Like for when, when the situation comes, you can like say your producer can be the security as well. Be like, Hey, we're recording here. You know, <laughs> Yeah. Kind of like, right, you, you right. know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you need to like uh, outsource your meanness, you know, <laughs> just, you know, have somebody, you know, maybe like a very intimidating lady, like that used like, to come up <laughs> actually at conventions. Someone, so like, for example, Larry Zabisco, I hate to throw him under the bus, it was Larry Zabisco, Larry Zabisco, he'd walk around with somebody. And instead of him saying, no, don't talk to me, whatever, he had someone with them. And they're like, no, you can't talk to, to Larry or, or whatever. And it was yeah. because he just can't stop and talk to everybody and do 8,000 interviews or, or just even stop and talk to everybody. Yeah. And then he also kind of come off like an ass if you're just telling people no. So he had someone with them that would walk around and do this for him. Hey, prick, a prick do proxy. I, that works for me. I can I can get with that. <laughs> We're on the opposite. Uh, I I love Bobby Heenan. He's great on the show, but he didn't have someone, and he did come off very rude. But I also understand he couldn't he couldn't just stop and talk to everybody he was talking to. He, he would have nothing. He he couldn't get. He wouldn't be able to walk across the the hotel. You know, if if he just oh, everyone that came up to him and said hello and. He just have to stand there and have a conversation with. I guess, I guess that's why you know they have those things in California, because like out here in California, man, we see celebrities all the time. We we don't trip, 
you know? Yeah, they don't. Um, <laughs> so I, I did a convention in LA years ago. I, I, mm -hmm. uh, host, I was there and I hosted like, I actually ended up hosting all the panels at that one. Yeah. But it did not, it was not well attended, attended. And uh, some of the people there told me, some of the celebrities, they're like, you just can't hold like something here with like people that you can just meet like walking around town. You'd have to, yeah. you'd ha you have to really bring in like a name that no one normally mm -hmm. meets for that. Yeah, ex exactly. And I mean, I mean, heck, uh, when I was little, I used to see Robin Williams all the time at the comic book store in San Francisco. Comics and comics, comics and the kind. He was always there, like to the point to where when I was little, I walked up to him and said, excuse me, sir, you look like Robin Williams. And he's like, oh, 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 thank you. Thank you very much. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know how Robin Williams was, rest yeah. in peace. But uh, yeah, you know, we, we, we see like Woody, Woody Harrelson, you know, not not right now, but, yeah, yeah. you know, and Danny Glover, you know, he lives in an in upper Fillmore area, like upper, upper hate area. I um, don't mean to dox him, but. Yeah, you know, we, we just see a lot of celebrities. So yeah, maybe start doing these out out doing your shows out in California. <laughs> you know, so no one can yeah, bother. No one, they would be like, oh, "Who cares? Someone, <laughs> someone's got a camera. Who gives a shit?" You probably would yeah. rather even avoid it. Like, oh god, another guy with the camera. Right. Yeah. Oh, more influencers. Oh, <laughs> just let me get away from the camera. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think. Uh, I mean, I know you've been around the show and stuff, but uh, the last time we we're in LA, I don't think you were actively part of the group. So maybe next time we go out there. Like I said, I would have loved to have been participated, but I would. I just had a very jealous person that you oh, know. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't watch my own. I can't watch my favorite show because of, oh, you, you know actually how that started. Like um, did this person. Uh, the person who uh, she, she posted in the group about a person that was constipated, right? And um, and basically, I said, "Well, hey, ish happens." I'm trying not to curse on your yeah. show, but I go, you know, ish happens. And then she responded by saying, "Apparently, not for this guy." And I remember that cracked me up for that. That I popped for that when I read that on there. <laughs> I, I popped for days, <laughs> like days, and I was just laughing, and I was just. And then my my ex now she was like, "What are you laughing? Are you laughing at that joke? You know, because she because I would never laugh yeah. at my ex's jokes. Yeah, but that one <laughs> joke, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I would like, <laughs> I was like, it would be a week, seven, eight days have passed, and I'm still like laughing at it and stuff. But so it started from there, you know. Uh -huh. Then they started to like, you must like that ish, you know. And and I'm like, no, it's no, I, I like the show. And then, you know, then she started co-hosting with you guys. And then she's like, oh, now I know why you want to listen to this show. And then it was an argument every night. You know, then the show would start. I got to go hide the show. That's why I, that's why I used to call in from my car. Remember, I would say, like, I'm, a, I'm in my car. Can I just listen? You know? Yeah, so I was oh, trying I to, remember that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying to <laughs> listen to the show in peace. <laughs> but, yeah, oh. but... Yeah, I had to. I had to get my in your head fix <laughs> in dark alleys, man. <laughs> in the car. Like the shit, yeah. someone, you know, they've got like a trench coat. Like, hey, buddy, you want some in your head? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah man. Let me go. I got to download it. You know. So it was. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. The, yeah. Right. <laughs> the things we do for love, I guess. Right. <laughs> man. But it's cool. I mean, you know, I like the I like the show. Um, someone else actually, um, who used to be a part of the the old uh, Get in the Ring universe. Yeah, yeah. He, he he does. He he uh, came back. You know, he he's doing shows now, like on oh, uh, Twitch. Yeah. Oh, not, um, not, one of the, not one of the actual hosts. No, it, it's the guy. It's another show, but it's the guy who's. Um, Co-host passed away. Oh, oh, I know you mean. Um, yeah, unfortunately, right, you know, right. rest in peace to him. But yeah, but he's still doing stuff now. I'm glad, glad to yeah, see I'm, he's got him on Facebook. Yeah, I'm glad to see he's here. bounced back. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Would, did you repeat that? I don't think you would even know. I, I, uh, for if you only knew him from like back in the, it was what was the name of the show? Um, 
But anyway, he's got a great big giant beard now. He looks uh, Wrestling News Live. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He's got the whole rockabilly thing, the whole yeah. ZZ Top thing going. Yeah, it's, it's it's cool. You know, I like. You know, I listen to it. You know, but I I know that that event. The kinda, unfriended me on Facebook though. That's weird. Why? <laughs> he was asking me for help, and then I gave him help, and then he unfriended me. Which is mm. was an on. I I love the show, but that was a, a recurring theme with the, with the fan. He would ask us for help, and then and then once he got it, he'd be he'd turn his back on us. <laughs> but uh, but I but get the ring is why we started the show in the first place. So I can't. Uh, can't yeah. All those were the good old days, man. I I I was like having so much fun in those in those. I mean, I'm having fun now, but yeah, yeah. Just those days, those, yeah, those, the those are words and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, the, the, I, I don't think you can access the old message board anymore, but uh, mm. people have been wanting me to do a Discord, which they said will have a similar vibe. So I don't know. Oh, you haven't you haven't done a Discord? No, I don't really know anything about it, but they, they, it's they, very they, easy. They say it would have a similar feel to the old message boards. Yeah, it's it's very easy and and like somebody's always in there to respond. Um, now, what you do is you download Discord, you download the uh, the app, and then you um, set up a room, a group or something. Because I never did this myself. So you, you set up a room, you put your admins in there, and I don't know if they still do the whole thing where if you want to add people, you have to like know their their name and that little four digit number that comes like as a really as a know. suffix I'm, the only time i did discord was during a festival that our movie played at and i was part of i was in there just because it that's where the chat was oh okay so it was someone else's discord yeah yeah oh oh okay so, yeah i don't know i have to look into it but we'll start i would be cool we could start one up for both shows if it's a platform people like and would want to do yeah, I could definitely. Yeah, I'll definitely hang out on both shows. I like. I like both. I like this whole heady verse thing, man. So yeah. definitely. Uh, anytime you guys. If people start just up, tuning in, uh, Kelly Maroney was on for over two hours. It was a great interview, but this is not Kelly Maroney. I know it says Kelly Maroney up in the. No, it, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely, that's not. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate it coming on. I'm going to uh, head out to because I actually haven't eaten supper. And I'm getting very oh. oh, well, go eat, man. You know, yeah. keep your, keep your strength I'm up. I'm glad you joined, uh, you called in here, videoed in. And, uh, maybe we'll start taking uh, videos into Without Your Head uh, when we have time, when we don't have double guests and stuff. That'll be fun. You can talk yeah. to her. We haven't talked to her yet, I don't believe. Uh, not not face-to-face, -face, but, uh, yeah, like in do Facebook and other yeah. things and, st and stuff but yeah not not face to face um interested in talking to uh your brother though about I like the the, mike i have a blue yeti is that what you have oh uh, no this is a um this is some cheap amazon stuff uh, I, yeah, I got this whole good honestly yeah oh uh, thank you but yeah i'm interested been talking to your brother about uh, 3D printing one day at, at leisure. At yeah, he leisure, just got. Leisure. He hasn't used it. Uh, I don't know if he's used it all yet, but he just got a 3D printer. And uh, I had do have him at work. I, I don't want to show any of this stuff yet, but um, I uh, I've been putting him to work for uh, Arbor Day. He's actually mm -hmm. been creating uh, the practical effects for the oh. uh, for the. For the the tree so it's very cool things are coming and now i'm forced to make this movie because i talked about making it for years mm -hmm. and now he's actually making stuff and i've got people involved uh i've got mm -hmm. someone with the score so i guess i actually have to make it now wow well, that'd be cool that'd be that'd be cool man i, I want to see i want to see that all right It'll be cool. Uh, yeah, me, Annabelle, Troy. Uh, I rec I recruited uh, uh, the my, the kid I know who makes my coffee. He's in it, mm -hmm. and uh, and Todd Yeager. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm mm -hmm. I, I might. St well, I'm going to start a, a crowd funder just to cover some of the cost. Nothing huge, not like you know thousands, but maybe a, a grand or something. So we'll see. But either way, uh, it'll be fun. And then I have a lot of ideas for different silly shorts and 
feature mm -hmm. film? Well, let, let me know. I'll I'll contribute if you get right. a got a got a Kickstarter. Yeah, I'll, I need to actually put it. I'll try to do that soon, so we so we can yeah. Not I'll, I'll make I'll make my contribution as soon as All it right. comes up. I appreciate. Yeah, my and my membership just renewed, so oh, cool. hey, I get well, my I badge on the other show. Yeah, <laughs> no I problem. Yeah, cool. All right, where can people find you, Coast, if you want them to? Uh, that's my that's my name right there. Oh, so right. Yeah, yeah, if you just Google, I mean, even if you find it on Russian sites like like our <laughs> YouTube, that's me. You know, okay. VK, that's me. You know, uh, and I'm just trying to like. No, I'm just trying to like saturate the market with the name so no one else takes it. So even well, if you see ago, this name somewhere, <laughs> yeah, years ago I got an email. They they wanted to buy, based not even buy. They, they were starting the. They took the in your head website mm -hmm. for China, and you uh -oh. couldn't fight it. There was no way you could like, no, you can't take this. The only way you could do anything is if you paid them a whole bunch of money to keep the to keep to keep your own website because there's, uh -oh. no, there's no law. There's no uh, laws in China about this like taking people's stuff. Yeah, intellectual property rights like work differently over yeah. there and stuff. You know? I was like, well, I'm not going to pay. So anyway, if you go to, I don't know if it's still there for a little for a while. This was probably like 15 years ago. If you went to in the in your head website, but you went to the Chinese mm -hmm. version, it was like a porn site. But I don't know if it still is or not. Mm, uh, okay, well, the in your head porn. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't see. Oh, I get I get how it can. Cool. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there was really nothing you could do. It's just like pay us. It was basically like blackmail. Pay us a bunch of money, mm. or, uh, or we're taking your site, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm like, oh, okay. Can we even get their internet? Because I know they have like that whole. Yeah, I don't know. This was a long time ago. Maybe you can't anymore either. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess VB yeah, I remember at the yeah. time I asked Tyler, who's our, our webmaster, and uh, he mm -hmm. was like, there's nothing you, there's no point even doing anything. Just let him take it. And I was like, okay. Mm. So it was like an in your head dot ch kind of? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's better just to buy the whole, buy the whole thing. You know, dot co's. Last time I checked, were like seven bucks. Yeah. You know, the dot X, Y, Z, that's like $4. So right. just buy all the in your wow. heads dot, dot com, net, org, you know, X, Y, Z, dot IO, you know, just buy them all and you'll be safe. <laughs> or can just take them, yeah. But yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Nothing yeah. Like that else. Although maybe they might, might try to take the without your head China site. I don't know. Turnabout's fair play, as they say, yeah. right? Right, I'm gonna go buy all these Chinese sites. <laughs> yeah, well, if you buy like Chinese sites, you know, or make a Chinese business, technically you're you have to give a portion of your business to. Well, you have to make go buy China a partner. Yeah, Timu.net. Yeah. It'll so redirect you know, them to without your head or something. But. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's already been done, but whatever yeah so uh i have flyers i have a question for everyone out there i have flyers Ooh. for um end zone 2 and the once in future smash my feature films and i put one up on the billboard every day at, at my grocery store and uh every day I go there it's gone and, and i always think that's a good sign so i keep putting another one up but then annabelle says it's probably them seeing this horror thing stuck up on a billboard at a grocery store with all these other, all everything else there is like I'll mow your lawn and kind of stuff. They probably just throw it away. And I was like, hmm. oh. I don't know if they throw it away because they they well, I only put one up at a time. My, I'm sticking with the positive side. Someone someone sees it every day and like that looks cool and they take it. Well, the, does it does it have like gore in it or does it have like the scary looking fonts text um... got the mask from enzo from it which is the pretty scary and then the flip side 
is someone dropping a severed finger into a blender. That's yeah. That's that's probably. That's but good, that's um, we're gonna find for a, for a uh, grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm gonna go with uh, your optimism. Just say, hey, someone's just saying, hey, that's cool. Let me yeah. take that home. Yeah. So exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I would just go with optimism here. But uh, I did but, put a stack. I I put yeah. them different places, and uh, like when I put them at a at a convenience store, and I noticed. That, they would keep going down and then eventually be gone. So they didn't throw them all away at once. I just put a stack of them there. Oh, okay. Well, at least you're people. making traffic. Yeah, yeah. I put it, they have like a display of like flyers for like, uh, like different tours, like uh, go to Martha's Vineyard, go at mm -hmm. all these local, and then I and then I just put a big stack of, of flyers for this horror movie. Like what the hell? Wow. What? Yeah, yeah. I would <laughs> like to. I'm thinking. I wonder if I should move out there, like because all, all that sounds cool, like sandwich, like uh, a high. Me, but it might it might be fun to visit. I don't know. It's it probably get pretty boring after a while. Mm hmm. I'm a pretty milk toast guy, man. I, I like I like boring stuff. I used to live in South Lake Tahoe. I, I like forests and trees. I'm not a city dude. Yeah, I like, I live across, yeah. which will be good for Arbor Day. Yeah, uh, well, I live literally across the street from the state forest. I would love it. <laughs> I, I would I would definitely love that. Like all that, like Oregon, you know, like Eugene. Even though Eugene's a smaller town, but you know, if you go any direction, you end up in like some rural area and stuff. Um, you know, stuff like Tahoe, like I just mentioned. Yeah, I, I like that. I like all that foresty stuff. So if you live next to a national park, that's that rocks more props to you. Cool. Than <laughs> also, uh, I haven't done this in years, but I used to uh, uh, go sledding in the in the state forest because they don't plow the the roads. So you have the big the roads and they're big hills. A couple of them were big hills, unplowed. Ooh. They were so great to go sledding on. Oh wow! Nice, nice. Uh, so are you are you thinking about you thinking about doing something like that? Go I, would, I used to when I was uh, up until my twenties. Probably I haven't in long, long time. But I, I would I would do that again. It was always fun. Mm. I don't think I don't have a sled, but I'm sure I can get one. Hmm. Well, well, one one thing I would like to say to you also. I mean, I don't know if you gotta go or anything, but just want to get get that out there. Like, also, I'm I'm glad you've recovered from your health stuff, and you know, you dropped a lot of pounds. That that's very ins inspiring, you know, because that's part of my thing too. I'm trying to lose weight myself, you know. But just the fact that you've done it, you know, you saw that something needed to be done, and you've done it. You know that that's very inspiring. So your story can actually be like helpful for other people that's on that same journey. So I appreciate that. My doctors actually wanted me to go in and talk to people about uh, weight loss and stuff. Because, uh, but it was it's very nice to hear. I appreciate that. Yeah, you definitely did it, and you know, congratulations to you. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I was worried during that whole period. You know, when it was just like Insure and Clinton doing those, you know, because you'd be gone for stretches of a show, yeah. you know, and, you know, it was, it was worrying, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, man. who the hell wants to listen to Clinton? No, 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 no. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, that that's good, man. You're on a road to health and, you know, and, and you've, you've made it, you're doing your walks. Uh, totally inspiring, man. This, your, your show's always inspired. You know, it made me laugh, inspire, inspires me, and I'm happy to be, you know, on the panel with it. You know, it's an honor. Well, very cool. Rookie of the year here, Coast, even though he's been around for years. But uh, thank, thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I, I'm just participating. I'm just new, yeah. a new participant. <laughs> I finally decided to get out of my shell and start participating. You know? No, I love it. Yeah, I love it. I see hearing you on both shows in the chat. It's a good time. Thank so, you. Thank you. Know, yeah, I do have to go because I do. I'm gonna get. Uh, now I'm gonna make sure it's something healthy. But no, I was gonna eat anyway some chicken breast and, and some vegetables. But uh, boil it. 
I, <laughs> boiled I, I, chicken. This is something that I eat a lot. And, uh, uh, is rotisserie chicken. So you can buy a whole rotisserie chicken for five bucks. Yeah. And, uh, it does have some sodium in, but okay. But health wise, it's fairly healthy. I get four meals off of it, each breast the meal, each mm -hmm. leg worth the meal. Then you can have the, mm -hmm. the wings for a side. You can you could do whatever you could do many things. So you could just roast it if you want to heat it up, or mm -hmm. you could take all the meat off of that and you can repurpose it for all different things. See, so mm -hmm. it, uh, it actually was a big part of me uh, losing weight is uh, using rotisserie chicken for, and it's inexpensive, and it's good. good. Yeah. Well, hope, hope you hope you keep it up, man. You know, all we can have many more years of you entertaining. Of being being the most honest man in all the podcasts. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right. We'll talk to you right. soon. I'm going to play this out with Lumia Dark, Music of the Month. Until next week, this is Nasty Neil. Say your name. Coast LPA. And this is with Coast LPA. Your head. Ah! <laughs> 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 This is not playing. Ha 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 ha!